Okay, we're live. What's up, guys? I know I haven't streamed in a while, uh, because I just wanted to take a little break. You know, a lot of work. But here we are, playing Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, not somewhere I thought I'd be. Uh, somebody in my community Discord asked a question I didn't know the answer to. Uh, we started having a discussion about it, and I, said, I decided, you know what, let me just log into the game and test it. So I logged in for the first time in a couple months, and it made me realize how cool this game can be, despite Plarium's best effort to ruin it. So I decided to make a new account. We are on the Rares Only Plus. What does Rares Only Plus mean? Well, I'm going to be using only rare champions that I pull from shards or farm from campaign, whatever. Any rare champion or lower rarity is fair game. We're only going to be using daily login reward champions like High Katoon, probably won't use Dark Aethel, Dark Elhane, Seal the Drakes, etc. So anything we get from login rewards, completely fair game. And champions which are free and permanently accessible. So that's going to mean Drexthar Blood Twin from the Bazaar when we unlock that. Uh, anyone who can be purchased from the clan shop such as Jakarl the Scourge or Yannicka. Um... If I can unlock Arbiter through these means of, you know, and restrictions, I will have access to Arbiter, things like that. Now, why, why am I doing this? Oh, before we get in, any deeper in. Um, not that. No, nope, not that. I will be not using this guy because he is not a permanently accessible free champion. A couple months from now, he's going to be off the table. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want this series to be educational for anyone who finds it, whether it's a month from now or two years from now. I want them to be able to watch these videos and learn from it. If I'm using a champion they don't have access to, it's not going to be educational. So, not going. To, this guy is just going to be a five-star chicken for me, basically, is what that comes down to. And that's it. Those are the parameters. Uh, unless I think of anything else, let's jump right in. We're on day two. I started this account last night at work, which is why we don't have the events leading up to up to now. Um, but yeah, uh, this I got some heavy hitters in my new player tournament. Um, if it'll load, so I started this account yesterday while I was at work, and this guy right here was about two to three hundred points ahead of me pretty consistently. But I was busy at work, so I wasn't stressing about it. And then when I got off work, I passed him by about 200 points. And I woke up, and he was like 1,000 points ahead of me. You can see, like, I don't think this guy's free to play, but it's fine. We're not here to win the tournament. We got all of our rewards here already. Um, so I'll collect this at the last possible minute to make sure. Because whenever you collect an energy refill, it gives you an amount of energy equal to your maximum. Right now, that's 87. If I would have collected that yesterday, it would have been like 20 energy. So I'm going to wait as long as possible before I can collect that to maximize how much energy I gain from it. Uh, I unlocked all the shop. I'm going to pick up these mystery shards. Uh, we chose Aethel as our starting champion. Yep, let's get that. Speed with speed. Um, just catching you guys up real quick. Initially, I was going to ride the War Priest wave and use her as my healer. Um... But then I, as soon as I hit her to four stars, I pulled Arcanist. And if you look at what they provide in terms of raw healing, uh, War Priest does a 20% heal on one target and then 10% on all the other targets, whereas Arcanist does a 15% heal that lasts for two turns. So she's bringing 30% team-wide, so it's just more value. And then when you compare their A3s side by side, it's exactly the same. Except this buff goes on for three turns, and it comes with an increased crit rate buff, where War Priest is for two turns, and there's no increased crit rate buff. So Arcanist is just, like, strictly better in terms of the buffs that she brings. So, but then I just pulled this before I started streaming, too. Abyssal. Um, he does de in de increased defense and increased attack on all allies, which is nice. And then a 15% heal on all allies. So he's kind of like, in terms of heals goes, he's sort of like in between these two. But increased defense is a pretty good buff. And he has block buffs on an AoE A1. This is tempting. I'm, I'm not, he's definitely not food. We're going to use him for something. He's going in the vault for now. 
Uh, and I've been farming War Maidens in campaign. I have four total. So that means three books. I still haven't decided if I want to use those for three-star chickens, which are would be extremely valuable for my account right now because I'm still on normal. Um, I'm trying to five-star one of my champions, either Shield Guard or Aethel, so I can just beat this and then smash through hard when we get there. Um, so I'm just farming food right now. That's, that's really all I'm doing. I need to check the arena, actually, now that I think about it. See if there's any easy fights. Okay, let's see if we can do this one. This is my arena team. I don't have a, any speed boosting champions yet. Uh, if I pulled Apothecary early, I would go all in on him. Um, if I don't pull a Apothecary before I get High Katoon, honestly, I'm probably just going to go with High Katoon as my speed champion. So whether or not I use Apothecary is going to depend on if I pull them before I th in my first 30 days so okay we're in silver one it's getting a little tough in silver uh, I've pretty much breezed through bronze one two and three four it's it started to slow down for me a little bit uh, we'll try this yeah, Bronze 4 got tricky, and then as soon as I got out of 4 and into Silver 1, it really started to grind to a halt. I have to, like, refresh every 15 minutes just to find... Uh, why didn't she do her... When she doesn't do her increase attack before she goes, it really annoys me. Yeah, I, I haven't decided if I want to go with Shield Guard or Aethel as my first 6-star. In terms of campaign farming um, shield guard might be better because he's a better affinity for 12-3 but for other content like wave nukers and stuff from that perspective uh, Aethel has higher damage multipliers so I'm not sure the reason I chose Aethel while we're on the subject of that um, is because she is one of two rares in the entire game who can bring the big version of Weaken. It's between Aethel and then one other. It's like a spirit affinity dog looking thing. It, it's just not that good. So if I want 25% Weaken, Aethel's pretty much my only option until I get either Rosin, who is falls within the perimeters of the challenge. He's a permanently available free champion. Or Lydia. <laughs> Who also technically falls within the parameters of the challenge, uh, but I don't. It's going to be a long time if I even get her at all before I get Lydia. So I think starting with the twenty-five percent weaken, I think is going to be a valuable asset compared to Kale, who is a great champion and he's a great poisoner. But there are tons of rare champions who do poisons, and some of them are even better at it than Kale. So just you know. I like the utility of having access to the big version of Weekend for like boss fights and stuff. So that was my logic there. Also, Aethel's kind of hot. Let's be real. Uh, I might lose this one actually. Maybe. Let's go ahead and do. Increase attack. Oh, we're up for the nuke. Okay. I have Aethel fully booked except for her A1. But her A2 and A3 are booked. I'm missing a few. I'm not going to fully book her A1. At least not yet. Also... Aethel has a 3-hitter A1, which makes her really good for Fire Knight, and that's one of one of the harder uh, dungeons getting started. So, there, I, I highly value the 3-hitter A1 there as well. I haven't even touched Fire Knight, honestly. I'm, I'm waiting until I get a, a challenge or a mission, whatever they're called, to beat Fire Knight before I spend any energy in there. Ooh, yikes. Okay. No! Oh, 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 that's not good. 
Okay, I might be able to freeze Kale with War Priest A1. No, that sucks. I might be able to put him to sleep with Arcanist A1. He resisted it. Uh, I think I'm gonna heal Arcanist because she's strong affinity to Kale. Which means I have a chance. No, I didn't get the sleep there either. Not getting the sleep either time was kind of a bummer. Hey, what's up, Alberto? I appreciate that, man. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, like, my last account was free to play. But I pulled some insane champions. Like, my first Void Epic on my last account was Demetha, so... And I pulled her about a week or two before, so like, I think I was like right here when I pulled Demetha. It was probably on a weekend, because there was would have been a times 2 event. So somewhere in here, I pulled Demetha. So I didn't even have my Dark Elhane yet. So not even four months in, I pulled Demetha, and I, I happened to have enough champions that I needed. I had Seeker too. I, I had just pulled Seeker, and then I pulled Demetha like a week later. So between Seeker and Demetha, I was able to do Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss super early on, and I pulled so many shards and books, like it trivialized the whole challenge of going free to play. So, you know, we're not we're not doing uh we're not gonna have any of that nonsense this time around. There are a ton of good rares, and that's I was actually talking to um someone on Discord. Uh his name is Ali. He's also got a YouTube channel, um, Raidology. He's a discorder on my community discord. And he was telling me he did a commons and uncommons only challenge. And he he got burnt out because it was too hard. So I, I think I think rares only is definitely doable. The only like literally the only Doom Tower boss that I'm concerned about is Bommel 90. And that's Doom Tower hard. I think I could do it on normal. Bommel on hard mode is gonna be I think the biggest hurdle to overcome. But I don't think there's any other Doom Tower bosses that I'm super worried about right off the bat. Oh, let's just do auto. Yeah, so just farming War Maidens right now, um, slash leveling up my Shield Guard. I I've never maxed out a Shield Guard before. And I want to try it. I think this is a perfect opportunity to do so. Normally, I do Kale as my starting champion. And because he's such a great poisoner, I there's never any hesitation about making him my first 60. Because not only is he a great campaign farmer, he's also great for dragon, clan boss, all that stuff. Now, Aethel will be good for those too because she brings the big version of Weaken. But in terms of campaign farming, I think Shield Guard might be better. So... Shield Guard might actually be my first 60 on this account. It's something I've always wanted to do, but I've never taken the plunge on it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I mean, Doom Tower Hard is a long ways away. Uh, on my Even with the really good luck on my last account, pulling you know Demetha early on and getting to Ultra Nightmare and being in a clan who kills Ultra Nightmare every day, like I was getting... Double rewards from Ultra Nightmare, Nightmare, and Brutal. Because I could two key Ultra Nightmare, one key Nightmare, one key Brutal. So I was just farming hella books, hella shards. Um, but even with all that stuff, it still took me until I got Vizix the Unbowed, which was a uh, nine months playtime reward, and Yakarl the Scourge from the Clan Shop with Clan Gold. The combination of those two together is what allowed me to finally clear Doom Tower hard. So it might be nine months before I even, you know, really start making it through the waves in Doom Tower. So it's not something like, I'm not trying to race, you know, this, I'm not, I know there's another free-to-play challenge going on with all the other content creators. Uh, this is different than that. Well, I think the one that they're doing is cool. This is just something that I've wanted to do for a long time. And... I just finally decided to take the plunge on it. Yeah. This is what I've been doing for like the last two hours off stream. <laughs> just uh, 
making food and farming for war maidens. I started a rares only free to play challenge like this about a year ago, but I didn't finish it. I quit after about a month. Like right after I got high Katoon, I kind of got burnt out and quit because I was playing on my main account too and trying to juggle two accounts at the same time was just too much. But since I quit playing, I'm not playing on my other account anymore. So I now I have the time and energy to like fully dedicate myself to this account. Um, and I'm going to play this account like it's my main account. I'm not even going to touch my old account. The grind never stops, that's right. Yeah. But yeah, on that last account the, that I was trying to... I started the, you know, rares only login reward champion stuff. I'm just going to call it the rare, rares, on, rares only plus is what I'm calling it. So I don't have to... That's the short version. Rares only plus. Last time I did the rares only plus challenge, it took me two weeks to farm enough war maidens to fully book my first war maiden. So it was a grind. However, I was still farming food at the same time. So it's not like I wasn't. It's not like I was just there for war maiden. I'm, I'm also leveling food, ranking up champions. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna fully. Do I'm not I don't know if I'm gonna do that again. That was it was a lot of work. Uh I am in a clan currently that does not have a lot of players doing the clan quests. So I was able to pick up three medium tier clan quests, and I've already finished two of them. And then I used the 400 clan gold that I got from those quests to buy four rare books. So I think farming clan quests for books is going to be huge early on. Uh, until I'm my account is at a level where I can join a clan that has unlocked Yakarl the Scourge, and then I'll start buying Yakarl the Scourge fragments as soon as possible. Because <sighs> he is just a powerhouse. He is going to be great for fire knight spider doom tower like he like even unbooked yakarl the scourge is an insanely powerful champion like i was using him unbooked when i first got him and he blew my mind how good he was he is so much better in practice than he looks on paper he's such an underrated champion like because i think what a lot of people do and i was guilty of this myself until i got my hands on him and tried him out for sand you look at this a3 and you go oh it's only a 75 percent chance to freeze that sucks but dude it's it's so good. It doesn't matter. Like it cuz he like if he misses somebody on this, it, he'll get him with the A2 or the A1 when he takes his next turn. And if you're building your champions right, they're taking multiple turns for every turns your enemy takes as well. So it like it literally it looks like a bummer, but I it it's it's good. Like the A2 has a 100% chance to freeze and then it fully depletes their turn meter. So they were about to take a turn and now they're not and they're frozen, and they have decreased speed put on them. So it takes them longer to get their next turn, and when they finally do get that turn, it's skipped because they're frozen. It's basically like a two-turn lockout on a single champion. Like, it's really good. His A1 is insane, and, it, like, he's... I can't wait to get you, Carl. He is the best free champion, in my opinion. Better than Seal of the Drakes, better than Vizix. He's the best. Trust me. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I... Sorry, I forgot what I was doing. I got so excited to talk about you, Carl the Scourge. But yeah, he's he's so much better in practice than he looks on paper. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Oh, I, I was going to rank these guys up. That's what I was doing. Okay. Uh, I get distracted really easy, so I apologize. I blame it on my ADD, baby. Normally I don't play with the uh, in-game music on, but I'm going to turn it up a little bit, just so there's just a little something in the background. I'm not going to turn sound effects on, because the sound effects are all crunchy and clanky and cringy sounding. They make me cringe. And then we'll throw some more two-star, well, yeah, we got some more two-stars, okay. Yeah, man. Oh, your Carl's so good. 
I can go on for hours. Not maybe not hours. <laughs> but uh yeah. Yeah, Armager is definitely another one that I'm uh I'm definitely gonna I there's n I use Armager on my other account. Like my end game I mean it's it's a free to play account, but I've you know, I've got piles and piles of legendaries just because of how early on I unlocked Ultra Nightmare on that account. But I still use Armager on that in-game account. Like, he's in almost all of my Doom Tower teams that... Like, if, if there's a Doom Tower boss who can have their turn meter manipulated, Armager is on that team, even in Doom Tower Hard. I think he, I use him on, like, three different Doom Tower bosses. At least two different Doom Tower bosses. He's a great... He's a great one. Dude, my gear sucks right now. That's the biggest struggle. And not only does my gear suck, but I don't have the silver to upgrade it. So it... That's... That's... Yeah. That's the biggest challenge right now, is getting gear that's not garbage. It's like, so... Th there's like two things I could do. I could just suck it up and keep farming food and just overpower the content by ranking up a champion to 5 and 6 star eventually, or I can stop grinding food and go grind dungeons. But the problem with grinding dungeons is I'm not getting food to rank up my champion, so it's like... I don't know. There might be some balancing act I can do where I, I allocate like two energy refills a day to farming dungeons for gear and then the other, whatever other energy I have to farming food. I don't want to... I want. I do want to get to the next... Like, farming food on normal campaign is not very efficient. So, I do want to try to beat normal. I think when my shield guard gets to level 40, I'll, I'll try stage 12 again. But right, like, he's just getting one shot by uh, Lord Shazar at the moment. And it's just, it's there's no point in bringing him if he's going to die to one hit. So, I'm just going to keep making food until he, he hits level 40. And then maybe I'll have enough to uh, rank somebody up to 5 star. I'm going to grab a water. I'll be right back. My mouth's getting a little dry. Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that. Man, I went to um, went to McDonald's to pick up dinner because my wife didn't feel like cooking and I don't know how to cook. So I, I did my auto battles. Uh, so just let my, my multi-battles run on this stage of campaign. I came back and I had... I was enough to uh, get two sets of two stars to level 20, so that was nice. But then I came back and I saw I'd also gotten... What's his name? Berserker. I'm not sure if I'm going to use him or not either. Yeah, silver is... A very scarce resource. I noticed it super early on, man. Like to fully unlock the market, I, I went from like a couple hundred. Like I felt like I had plenty of silver, so like, all right, well, I'll just unlock everything really fast. I unlocked all the slots for the marketplace, and then I was tapped again. I was like, damn. And I've gotten two ancient shards from the market so far. 200,000 silver a piece. 
I was fortunate I actually happened to have enough. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I don't let my silver get below 200,000 in case another one pops up. Because on this account, Ancient Shards are basically the equivalent of, like, Sacred Shards. Because I'm not using Legendaries I pull from Shards. Or Epics. So, like, Rares... I'm all about the Rares, baby. So, I think if I start accumulating, like... Sacred Shards are just food for me, basically. But if I if I start accumulating sacreds, uh, I'm just gonna hold on to them and then use them to get resources from summoning vents. Because I, I don't care about the champions. I want to make sure that I'm using them to score points so I can get like books and stuff. Because I am eventually I'll have Sil of the Drakes, Vizix, Yakarl the Scourge, you know, champions like that. And I well actually, yeah. Yakarl could function without books, but he's better with books. I'm gonna have to look at Vizix and Sill. I know Sill gains increased chance to stun. So she's probably definitely worth booking, especially she has turn meter reduction and decrease speed on her A1, so I'll probably save all my legendary books for her. So I've got like six months <laughs> to start racking them up. You know what? It might sting a little bit for you guys, but it doesn't matter to me because I want to do the challenge. I'm looking forward to... Oh, another shield guard. Okay, cool, cool. We're going to book our shield guard real quick. That's another reason I'm farming this stage of campaign because we're going to get the war maidens and the shield guards. So let's go ahead and... Um... Ooh, you going to bed? Yeah, give me a hug. Are you going to sleep on the couch or are you going to go to your bed? Oh, we can't turn the TV on, huh? Okay. I love you. Do you need me to tuck you in? Okay. Give me one second. You open the trash can. Do you want to say hi? Just look right there and say hi. No? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go tuck my daughter into bed real quick, guys. I'll be right back. Let's go. I'm back. <sighs> yeah, she is shy. Uh, when I was making videos like more regularly, she would always ask, can I be in one of your videos? And I'm like, sure, babe. And then like, every time she comes out while I'm recording or streaming, she gets real camera shy. So I was like, said you wanted to be in the video. Like, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. There was one we did. Um, it was the um, sort of like the two one. Be my channel. Like it took us like ten minutes to get the a good take. Maybe maybe not ten minutes. Uh, this one. What's up, guy? Okay. This one right here. Guys, to conquer high levels of clan boss, it is imperative you are running a speed tuned team. Speed tuning is when you gear your champions in a way that takes their turn order into consideration in regard to not only each I think other, it was this one. but the clan boss as well. The best way to do this is to visit DeadwoodJedi.com. This site has plenty of pre-existing speed tunes available that reliable sources have already come up with. You can browse by turn ratio, or by champion, 
to try to find ba basically she said so let's dive in right like at, at, at the for the intro of the video i don't remember which video. i thought it was that video but maybe it's not it took us many tries to uh to get one where she was like she said it clearly enough that you could understand what she was saying and loud enough so the microphone would pick it up and then also like that she was kind of looking towards the camera a little bit but it was fun i don't know Cats are going crazy. Yeah. And then the next day she's like, you said you were going to put me in your video. And I was like, what are you talking about? I did. And she's like, nuh-uh. I was like, dude, trust me, I put you in the video. And then I pulled up the video and showed her. She goes, oh. <laughs> that was it. I don't know. She's a little cutie. So I was looking at shield guards, damage multipliers on hellhades.com and comparing them side by side with Aethel's. And Aethel does do more damage. But when you're first getting starting out on like trying to farm campaign, um, you're not just one-shotting the mobs anyway. You're taking a lot of damage and it's really easy to die. So I'm, I'm thinking shield guard might have the advantage there. Because you can scale up his defense. His, his damage scales off defense. So as you build him with more and more defense, he's going to do more and more damage. And also take less and less damage. And he's he's the best affinity for 12-3 at Spirit. Because there are some force affinity enemies on 12-3. I don't know, man. Like, part of me is scared because, like, what if it doesn't work? You know, and I invest all these resources into them. The other part of me is like, oh well, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, I'll still use them in faction wars and Fire Knight twenty spirit affinity. I'll need a spirit affinity nuker for Fire Knight twenty, and he does decrease speed on his A one. So, I mean, I'll, I'll get use out of him somewhere. But uh, I'll need to farm a defense percentage chest piece. Like, I could use the speed lifesteal boots. I could use the crit rate lifesteal boots or gloves that I'll get tomorrow. I think you get five star. Like, you get six pieces of lifesteal gear from your daily logins here. So, I'll get these crit rate gloves tomorrow. And then the helm, shield, and sword. I won't be able to use the chest though because this is attack percentage. I'll have speed boots, crit rate gloves, and then I'll just need like two other two of these pieces to be good, and then I'll just mishmash the other two pieces. And we'll give it a try. But when I get those gloves tomorrow, it's gonna be huge. Oops. Actually, let me let me try. Let's go ahead and try to do this. Now that he's 33. It's Betterd's. If I can't do it, I'll wait till level 40. Try again. Uh, this one. Oh, never mind. That was that was dumb. She's weak affinity. I should have hit the lowest one. Okay. This is where things usually get hairy for me. As soon as he attacks is usually when shield guard dies um, so I think I just dogpile him oh yes okay that is great all right let's do a quick heal and then he's got the highest turn meter hopefully we can kill him before he gets to go Another heal. Nice. Um, I don't want to do my extra turn thing yet, because I'm at full HP, and it would be kind of a waste of the continuous heal. Okay, I'm gonna hit the one that's highest, and then we'll kill her with. Okay. 
Also, saving the increased attack buff for this wave is pretty good, too. Okay, um... Try to kill this Shazar, damn it. Oh, wait, we got the AoE. Okay, that's good. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Hell yeah, okay. We're gonna keep going. Shield guard leveling up a little bit was good. Okay. I have no idea what I'm gonna do for the boss, if I'm being honest. Hey, what's up, ML? Yeah, well, the funny thing with that... <laughs> uh, someone was asking me a question in Discord, on, on, the, on the raid Discord, and I didn't know the answer, and we were having a discussion about it, I was like, you know what, why don't I just test it out? So I logged in, and I did a bunch of tests, and I came back with the results that I found, and as I was testing it, I was like, you know what, this game is actually really cool. Despite Plarium's best efforts to ruin it, this is a really good game. I'm going to try to put him to sleep real quick. Yes, okay. Uh, we're not going to do the AoE because we don't want to wake up Shazar. I will try to put decreased speed on one of these guys, though. Um, so yeah, I was like, you know what, this is a really cool game. I kind of miss playing. Let's look. All right, whatever. I've been wanting to do this style of free-to-play challenge for a long time. I started one about a year ago, and I just never finished it. So I think now that I'm not playing my main account anymore, I can give this account the full attention it deserves and really just dive in and have a good time on it. So, Hey, yep, I'm back. What's up, guys? I think I'm going to save the self buff for the next wave. I don't want Arcanist to die. Getting the sleep on that Shazar was huge, by the way. I don't know if I said that or not. Considering she's weak affinity, that... Yeah, okay. I was not expecting that to work, but it was worth a shot. Okay, so... I guess I'll try it again. No, okay. Well, maybe we'll kill him here. Okay, good, good, good. I think we're good. Like, once Shazar is down, it's like a completely different game. Uh... We'll attack this one. Well, let's do this. I think, I think, yeah, I knew I had talked to somebody about that, but I couldn't remember who it was. I think it was you. We were talking, we were having that discussion when I was playing. Wow. Like, progressing through raid is so much more fun than being an endgame player. Because when you're endgame, there's nothing to do. That feels, it feels like you're just spinning your wheels. There's no progression to make. You're just doing the same crap over and over again. Yeah, progressing is the fun part. Like, working your way through and overcoming all the challenges is what I love about this game. Solving the puzzle. I'm going to try to put Shazar to sleep. Maybe I'll just kill him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, last time I was in here... I think I had just ranked up Shield Guard and he was like level 12, so I was having a little bit of trouble because he kept getting one shot. But we're doing good now. He's got some more stats. Also, it feels nice to be loved. I'm going to be honest, it was a little depressing to like do a WoW stream and maybe get like two viewers all night. And then I've been streaming Raid for like, oh, how long have I been going? less than an hour and I've already got like eight people watching like you guys do care it feels nice it's good to be back I'm glad you guys are having a good time because uh, I know I'm having a good time all right here we go Let's, we gotta focus actually you've got a, they got a Kymar too Imar isn't that big of a threat, because he just puts me to sleep. And if he's fast... No, he's got... Okay, never mind. Being put to sleep will be kind of annoying. Okay, everybody resisted, so that's cool. I'm going to go ahead and kill Kaimar, if I can. Alright. Diabolist is... Well, let's go ahead and heal. 
everybody. See if we can slow her down a little bit. Nice. Ooh, that, that skill hits really hard. It ignores defense. I don't know if she has to be ascended for it to ignore defense. But she's not ascended currently, so... It doesn't matter. Alright, well, I guess we're on the boss now. Uh, more to Macabre. And if we win, we get a Void Shard. I got my fingers crossed for a Seducer. I'll settle for a Cold Heart. Uh, let's give this a go. If we fail, I think we're just going to have to level more food until we can 5-star somebody. But hopefully we don't fail and we can just one-shot this. I can go for the kill here. Yeah, let's do that. She's weak affinity, and then we'll use the neutral on this one. Okay. Oh. Two Shazars, and I don't have any AoEs. I think I try to put this one to sleep. <laughs> I'm really good at this game, what can I say? And then we'll try to kill this Shazar with my other champs if War Priest gets the turn. Dude, I'm too good. I'm too good. You can't touch this. Mmm, dang it. Oh, no, 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 it's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Does, does Mortu have minions? I think he's got two minions, right? My War Priest will get a turn before Shazar, it looks like. So I'm going to use Aethel to attack this Hellgazer here. And use the War Priest to kill him. This Aethel hits a little harder. And I'll see if I can put this one to sleep. Ah, uh, weak hit. Okay, and then I'll kill this one. Finish this one off. I don't think we're going to do it, guys. We are... Roasted and Shield Guard's already dead. He does have minions. <sighs> Immune, okay. Has a 10% chance to unlock the secret skill peril for one turn. Also has a 20% chance to fill this champion's turn meter by 25% when attacked. So when attacked or when dealt damage? Because if Aethel hits him three times, does that... I don't know. Okay, we'll just do this for now then. Okay, no peril. That's good. We're going to heal. Oh, at least she got her heal off before. Ah, oh, dude, these... Even the side ads... They're level 50! <laughs> well, that's a bunch of baloney. Well, hopefully... Um, okay, no peril. Let's just go for it. I do have lifesteal on Aethel. It's not... Ah! Peril. Well, okay, the side adds are level 50. So I think I might have to... I'm going to try one more time, and then if I fail, I'll go farm some more food. I was being so careful, too. I might have survived that peril, honestly. Or I might have survived if he hadn't periled. I think. Maybe. But look, th th this wave is level 25. This wave is level 28, and then it goes straight to freaking level 50. On top of the boss being able to one-shot you. If you, you know, if you look at him funny. Now this, this is not a good run. This Shazar is going to bomb everybody. Unless War Priest can freeze. She's got a 15% chance to freeze. If ever there was a time... No, okay. Well, it's worth a shot. Oh, I got one turn to kill these guys. I have to heal Aethel. Man. I'm going to save the AoE. Sleep? No. Okay. Okay. Now these ones are level 50. Like, it's such a crazy jump. I 
I think I just ignore the side ends and try to burst them down. As silly as that sounds, but like, I don't think, okay, decrease speed, that's really good. These side ends are just hitting so damn hard, dude. I might not. If you, I was going to say, if he perils, he's not going to target Aethel because of affinity. Did I do it? No, not yet. Okay, I need like one more turn. Okay, I'm not going to... Peril got me. Okay. I think I could do it if I don't get periled twice in a row. That was close. That was, I was literally... Okay. I know I said I was going to only try one more time, but... That was too close not to try again. Maybe I shouldn't use my AoE on the first wave and save it for the double Shazar wave. Just put this one to sleep. We get okay. Oh, I'm gonna save Shield Guard's AOE also, because it, was, it wasn't gonna. It's not like it was gonna kill everybody. Uh, let's see if we can kill that one at least. Okay. Um, my War Priest will get a turn before Shazar, so we'll do that. Actually, hindsight. Oh, damn. I have to kill Shazar. Sleep? No. Okay. Damn it. This, this is not it. I'll try it. I mean, I'm not just going to quit halfway through. I already spent the energy, but I've got it. I don't think we're going to make it. If I'm not planning to kill the ads, I, should, I think the A1 is the way to go because it puts Weaken out. Okay, he did get a turn meter boost. Oh, maybe I should try to sleep the ads. Well, yeah, this we're hosed. And he just got the. I think he's gonna peril again. It's it says it's a 20% chance, but I swear to God, it's like a 75. Oh, he didn't get Peril. It did boost his turn meter, but it didn't activate Peril. I've got block buff, so I can't... Even if I had it off cooldown. If I don't die, if I don't die... Okay, I'm gonna do the AoE. Because I do have lifesteal gear on. And it's just a little bit more healing. I didn't get Peril. No! I'm so close! It was so close! It was so, so close. Look at that little sliver. Little sliver. Maybe... Let me look at what I got going on over here. Is there something else I can do differently? I do have one four-star chicken. Actually, two. I got one from... Where's it at? These little rewards you get from, like, I'm saving the auto battles for later, but one of these gave me a four-star chicken. I don't remember which one it was, but so I've got a four-star chicken from that right here. See what we get in this chest. Maybe that'll give us something. Twenty-one gems. Twenty-one gems. So awkward. Why would you do that? Make it twenty-five. Make it thirty. Now I have to get the gem mine so I can get four gems to even this out. It's gonna be bugging me. I was. Ugh. 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 Okay. Well, let's hold on. Let's take a short break from campaign to check out Arena. 
Yep. We're gonna take this battle for sure. Man, that's rough. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm just gonna... It doesn't matter. Um... I think we can do this one. Probably. One thing I do slightly regret <clears throat> was using my um, sniper as food. Because I was in a hurry to rank up Aethel, and I was like, you know what, that, that might have been a mistake. That, that was probably a little harsh. Or too rash. I'm going to put a... Hopefully, well... Decrease speed here? Yes. Okay, so maybe my War Priest can... Nice. Cut in and heal Aethel before Sniper goes. Okay. Hey, what's up, Vio? Vio? It's good to be back. It's good to be back, guys. Yeah, I wasn't sure how I was going to do this. I think... In terms of, like, covering the series, I might just live stream, like, do one live stream a weekend on it. Because I still, I still enjoy playing uh, World of Warcraft Hardcore. And I'm planning on playing Dragon's Dogma 2 when it comes out. But I think I can, I can dedicate one night a week to doing, like, a... A recap, like either a live stream or a video to show you my progress that I've made over the week while I was at work. Something like that. I think we can beat this guy. So, I don't know. We're, we're, I'm going to play it by ear. Dragon's Dogma 2 doesn't come out till like April, though. So that's that's a long ways off. Um, and I am having a lot of fun playing Hardcore WoW. Even if it is painful sometimes. <laughs> Stay alive. Do I? So the question is, do I kill the Gaelic or attempt to kill the Gaelic, or do like a, a sure thing and go for the? I think there's a chance of a land weaken on the first hit that I can kill him. Yeah. So let's try to sleep this one, or I can kill her. I guess that's the next best thing. Or, I guess killing her is better than sleeping her, but effectively it was it accomplished the same goal. Take her out of combat. Oh, oh! Oh, now I got some relentless gear. What is this for? Clear stage seven. Okay. What is this? Upgrade a champion to level forty. Thank goodness it didn't make me do that again. Uh, upgrade two more artifacts to level twelve. Huh? Let's do that real quick. So yeah, this is... <laughs> it's not exactly great gear that I'm working with here. Uh, like, I, I don't even have crit rate gloves. I think I have one pair of crit rate gloves on my account. Alright, I've got a... Okay, i got a couple. Like, these are my only three-star crit rate gloves. But then it breaks... I lose 15% attack... And it's, like if, if these were enough to get me to 100% crit rate, I would equip them at the cost of 15%, you know, attack. But since I'm not landing a crit every hit, I think attack is more valuable at this level. Uh, so until I get better gear, I don't think crit rate is because right now crit rate, like if I put those gloves on, it would maybe give me another 20%. So that put me to 60%. That would mean I'm only getting value from that stat 60% of the time. If I stack attack, then every time I attack, I'm getting value from that. So I'm get, I get value from this stat 100% of the time. So until I can get 100, at least like 95% crit rate, I don't think crit rate is worth investing in heavily. That's my opinion anyway. Um, you're welcome to... Oh yeah, we gotta level up artifacts. So that's the thing, is like, all my artifacts suck, so what do I... What, what do I put silver into? Accuracy, crit rate, speed, and accuracy on this piece. Okay, we'll go this one to 12. And look how slow this is, dude. Oh. 
They made it slower. There's a pause between failing and trying again. It didn't used to be that way. Like, they, they made it even slower. Level 40 can't come soon enough. This is the biggest pain in the ass. Like, when I was playing at work, I was like... Oh, yeah, I got time to do something real quick. Let me do this before I, I get back to work. So I, I hit it, and I'm like... This is taking forever. So I just set my phone down and walked away and, like, go to... It's, a, it's like a deliberate waste of time. Hey, we got accuracy. I'm leaking. Damn it. Okay, well, that's not bad. Attack percentage and accuracy. Maybe. None of these... I don't have any speed boots either. I have one, the only pair of speed boots I have are these ones. They're already at twelve. <laughs> like I, I just wanted her faster, so I gave her this crappy. It was just like <laughs> my gear is so bad. Ugh. Oh wait, 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 wait! I bought that helm from the shop earlier that had speed on it. Uh, this one. Okay, we'll we'll level this one to twelve and slap this on somebody. Okay, it's got attack percentage, crit damage, and speed. So, in 10 minutes when it's done rolling, I'll put it on somebody. Hey, it rolls speed too. Nice. So maybe we can put a different chess piece on Arcanist and give her this helm. Something with like HP percentage or defense percentage. Or <laughs> even just flat HP or defense at this point. I don't even care. Something other than resistance. She's squishy as hell right now. I prefer speed, but I'm okay with attack. I think crit damage is probably the worst one to roll. Because I don't have any crit rate, so it's it's a worthless stat. 80% of the time right now. This bottle is leaking. I mean, it, it was like a free bottle. My grandma gave it to me. And she got it from the eye doctor. She's like, I don't want this. Do you want it? And I was like, sure, I'll, I'll use it. Speed! Hooray! Okay, let's put this on Arcanist. And then... Uh, this doesn't even have speed on it. I'm just going to remove and destroy. It's not worth the 2,000 silver to keep that thing. So what do we... We would like a... Defense percentage, HP percentage, plus an additional 15% HP for matching the set. How about that, boys? Alright, so now our Arcanist is zooming at 122 speed. Still not faster than my Aethel. Um, but that's fine. I'd like her to be eventually so she can do her uh, increased crit rate buff before Aethel goes, but... Clear stage one of Fire Knight's Castle. Alright. We're going to take a break from campaign. Uh, this guy has a three hitter. <laughs> Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, include reserve vaults. Where's... We'll throw a war maid in there. She's not leveled up yet. Uh, I'm just going to hit auto. We'll probably clear it on stage one. Until I get to the boss. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Now we're going to manual. I don't have any turn meter control. I haven't pulled an armager yet. Uh, decrease speed? Hey, there we go. Bonk. I do have one champion set aside. Um, oh, it only hits twice if she crits. I forgot about that. Uh, I'll heal once the shield is down, I think. Um, I really need to get the shield down. Okay, we're good. I feel like I was saying something, and I forgot. Oh! War Maiden. She only crits... No, that's not it. I mean, that's what I was saying that, but that's not... 
I'm gonna take an extra turn so the speed buff falls off. Um. Hey, defense down. Okay. Um, man, I am really bad at. <laughs> what, was, what was I saying? It wasn't the thing about War Maiden. Oh, Armager! Armager! Yeah, I haven't even seen an Armager yet. Not that I would put a priority on building him at the moment. Alright. I think this hits harder. So can we get a poison? No. Oh, I think it's only our A2 that poisons. Uh, I want to get the damage in before the shield goes back up. Again, I want to get the damage in before the shield goes back up. Oh, I also have a... That's what I was going to say. I hadn't started saying it. I have a guy in my vault who has uh, healing reduction. Who I was saving because you, there's a mission to place the heal reduction debuff on a, on the, the spirit affinity potion keep boss. So I, I didn't want to use him as food because I know I'm going to need him eventually. Then I pulled another champion who his healing reduction from the Shadow Confaction. So, ooh! Savage Boots with speed and crit rate? I don't think I'll ever be in a position where I'm going to use a two-star Savage Boots, though, unfortunately. Okay. See, I got this chick. I was going to save her for uh, Fire Knight also. Can I... Yeah, okay. So she's got... Heal Reduction A1. Which is good for Fire Knight. And then she's got a 3-hitter A2 with decreased speed. And some turn meter. So attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has a 50, 60, 75% chance of decreasing the turn meter by 10%, which isn't terrible. The third hit has a 50% chance, 50, 60, 75% chance of placing decreased speed, which is nice. So a three-hitter heal reduction, and then she puts a reflect damage on herself. So if she gets attacked, it knocks it. Like that's that's kind of like whatever. Ideally, you'll never have to use her reflect damage on Fire Knight. Hopefully, you can just keep the turn meter down. And but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep her for Fire Knight because I don't know if I'll ever pull Cold Heart. So we're we're, we're gonna hang on to this one. Um, what do we got next? When I just did this, I, I we we just had this conversation. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna wait for the refresh. So let's let's in the meantime let's farm some campaign. And what do you guys think? Do you guys think we should do Aethel for our first six star, or do you think we should try Shield Guard and see how that goes? Right now, I kind of curious to see how shield guard will work i've never built him as an early game campaign ca uh, farmer before and i think it has potential to be fruitful educational one way or the other because there's a lot of youtubers out there who are like yeah shield guard's great use him as your campaign farmer but like is that a viable option i've never done it as an early game player i've only seen people who are late game who build him with late game gear to you know like i think it would be Edu I like to test things. I'm a very fidgety, like, get my hands on it and see how it works kind of guy. So I, 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 I'm personally, I'm leaning towards Shield Guard. Um, I don't know. I think it'd be fun to learn. We could all learn to raid together. I still need to build War Maiden at some point. I might... If I'm really, really lucky... I can get away with only needing four books for my War Maiden. That would be sick. Last time, I needed all 14. So... I'm just expecting it to go that way. But right now I have three extra copies, so if I get a fourth extra copy, I'll go ahead and try to book her out. And see how it goes. If all four go straight into the A3, I might just stop what I'm working on and get her ascended so she does the big version of decreased defense. I don't know. 
Like, getting the three turn cooldown on an AoE decreased defense is actually really big. I don't see anybody objecting to shield guard, so I think that's gonna be my my next or my not I didn't say next, my first five star. We're gonna try him out as my campaign farmer. But then again, uh Aethel against Mortuma Cobb specifically, having Aethel at five star would be a lot better. She's just he's she's the a better affinity. I think her A1 does more da both of her skills do more well. Well, I looked it up earlier. I want to look it up again. We're going to go to hellhades.com real quick. I forgot I had a shortcut for it. Okay. Um, and I got to take their, not just the multipliers into account, but their, their base stats as well. So at six star, Shield Guard has 1,024 base defense. And his... A1 has a four times defense multiplier, which is actually really good for an A1. And then his AoE has a 3.4 times defense multiplier. So it's not bad. It's it's like it's not terrible. But if you look at Aethel. If I can spell, my fingers are really fat. Yeah, big meaty sausage fingers. Okay. Now her base attack is at six stars is one thousand one hundred eighty nine. So about not quite, but just about two hundred higher than Shield Guard's base damage stat. And then her A one is a one point three times attack. Plus 30, so 1.3 times 3 is, uh, what is that, 3.9 times attack. The Shield Guard has a higher multiplier on his A1, but he's also got a lower base damage stat. His def base defense is lower than Aethel's base attack. And then Aethel's AoE is 4.1 times attack, which is bigger than Shield Guard's AoE too. Uh, when I look at the numbers, my gut tells me to go with Aethel as my first 6-star. But the curiosity factor of, is Shield Guard actually worth maxing out as your first 6-star to be your campaign farmer? That's the burning question. Because I gotta, okay, I think specifically for fighting more to Macabre, obviously Aethel is better. She's a stronger affinity, which means not only does she do more damage when she attacks, but... She has a higher base crit rate against, like, more... She gets bonus 15% crit rate and a damage bonus for being positive affinity. So she will hit more Tuba Cop harder than Shield Guard. But I need to think long-term. Broad picture. Big picture. Who will make a better campaign farmer once I'm ready to start farming campaign on 12-3? I think that's the question I need to ask myself. Shield Guard is the better affinity because the enemies in 12-3 are Force and Spirit, which means Shield Guard will always be either neutral or strong affinity. And because he's defense-based, he's less likely to die when he doesn't one-shot a wave. So, like, to me, it, I think it's worth trying. I don't know. I think okay. I'm committing to it. I'm committing to Shield Guard because I I really want to see if he's if he's worth the hype. Okay. Okay. So that means I need to start leveling up. I've got this plus one in my bank. So I got two chickens. I need two more chickens, which means I need to level up two level 30 champions for food. And then I'll need six to feed to them to become four stars. So I need six, seven. I need eight 
three stars total. So one, two, three, four. God, this is such a... I could use these two. So there's four, five. I don't need him anymore because I have her. I think she's better. Okay, hold on, hold on. Before I start sacrificing rares. Let's start with the comments. One, two, three... By maxing out Shield Guard, I'll, I will already have a Spirit Affinity Damage Dealer. So I'm not going to use him. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so good. So we just need to level up two of these to 30, and then we can make two more 4-star chickens, and then we'll take the plunge on Shield Guard to be our first 5-star. I might have been desperate enough to consider buying those if they were speed, main stat. Okay, well, what's this? Crit rate and resistance, no. Oh, nice, George, uh, Georgios. It's cool, man. It's fun, isn't it? Just think of all the chickens you're gonna get from your sacred shards. Gotta look on the bright side. Okay. I guess we'll just level these two since they're already in here. Okay. Yeah, on the, the last account I did like this, I kind of fizzled out because it was just too much work to try to run two accounts at once, but I, I kind of quit playing on my old account, so it's not a big deal anymore. Um, but yeah, on that last account, I had... Like, I pulled a Seducer from my first Void Shard, and then on the very next Ancient Shard, I pulled a Temptress. So, like, I was instantly stoked because I knew I was going to have Clan Boss, like, set. I hadn't been farming Stage 3 uh, because these guys hit really hard. And I just instinctively went to stage 3, because that's technically where you're supposed to farm, because you get the most silver. And we did it just fine, so I'm just going to keep doing stage 3 for now. But yeah, man, I was... That account was actually set before I quit playing on it. And I pulled Narhorn from a Mystery Shard, which... Narhorn is such a good crowd control champion, dude. I actually use him on my Doom Tower hard team on my main account. He's my... So it goes... Narhorn to put Provoke on the enemy team. And then my Karmar Kaimar goes, then my Renegade goes, then my Lydia goes, and then my Seer nukes. And then it goes to the next one. Oh, no, no, no. Kaimar and Renegade go before Narhorn. Because they reset, and then Narhorn provokes again, and then... So yeah, Narhorn is on my Doom Tower hard wave clear team on my main account. That's how good he is. Such a great champ. So yeah, that that the last account was actually in a really good position to like be a great rares only account. But I hadn't played that account in so long, I just decided it was probably better to start fresh. And I think a lot of people would be more interested if they can see the journey from the start. And I didn't start documenting what was going on on that account because I was just kind of doing it for fun. So to jump in 30 days into it, like, you know, I think people would have wanted to see how I got to day 30 rather than starting at day 30. Oh, you get you did Aethel too. That's awesome. Wait, you got Spirit Host? Or not, so we got Coffin Smasher. Nice. So I think it's Coffin Smasher, Veteran, and Bog Walker are the three A1 decreased attack champions that do the big version. So the fact that you already have Coffin Smasher and he does HP burn. That's you you got a you got frozen banshee too. Man, you have a really good start. See that's I started with Aethel because she's the only she's one of two rares 
who can do the big version of Weaken. Which means if I want the big version of Weaken, I basically have to wait until I get Rosin. Unless I start with Aethel. So that's why I chose her. Because I do know that Frozen Banshee's out there, and I'll get her someday. I forget what the other champion is who does the weekend. I kind of want to look it up real quick. I'm on hellahades.com. Let's see. Uh, hold on. This going. Sorry. Well, let me. Sorry, maximize it. Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, then we go to. Buffs and debuffs, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. And then we go to... Why isn't it... Don't want that. Why is that going? It's not doing the thing that I want it to do. Ugh. Debuffs? Oh, that's why. Okay. So. I thought it was such that you can click on the debuff. Oh, yes, you can. Okay. I was only looking at it like out the corner of my eye because I was playing on the other screen. Okay. So rare champions who can do 25% weaken are let me scroll down to the bottom here oh there's more okay hold on I thought there was only two hold on let me pull up this so Aethel obviously I thought this was the only other one twenty five percent weekend maybe the other ones aren't twenty five what about this guy? Halberdier? Maybe it's not 100% chance. Attacks one enemy, 25% chance. So it's a very low chance. So, But he can do it. I did not know that. Maybe that's what I was looking at. Let's see what Huntress. I think this is a Void. Yeah, she's Void. 50, 75, 85. So it's not even 100% chance to land. With books. Stitched Beast. It's also a Void Champion. 25% chance. Yeah, so that's trash. Like, you, like if you're going to bring a champion to a fight to place a debuff, you want to make sure they're actually going to place the debuff. If you look at Aethels, I'm pretty sure it's, it's like... Fully booked on her A1, it's really close to 100% chance. And it's each hit. Attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has 75% chance, 80, 90, 100% chance. Three hitters. So if it, the first hit gets, like, she's just the best rare weakened champion in the game. Period. So I figured I'd start with her and just cross my fingers and hopefully pull a Frozen Banshee eventually. I pulled dagger void rare user. Yes, yes. Uh, she does decrease defense. Does she also do decrease attack? Or am I? Let me look her up real quick. Yeah, dagger's a good one too. She's very, very squishy though. Dagger. So her base defense is 793. And her base HP is 1,200, uh, yeah, 12,000. 12, it's very squishy. Uh, let's see. The A2 decreases defense. The A3, 50, 60, 75% chance of placing decreased attack. Places a big version instead if the target is under, okay. Yeah, so I think she's the only rare who can do the big version of decreased defense and the big version of decreased attack. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Definitely the only rare who does both big versions of those two debuffs. The unfortunate side is they're not 100% chance to land. Uh, I know Veteran is a defense based Void Legendary who can do the big version of decreased attack on his A1. I think he also has an AoE block buffs or something like that on his A2 or A3. Well, I'm gonna look at Veteran real quick. I have such a vague idea, but I don't have all these champions memorized. Also, quick shout out to Hell Hades and building this awesome website because. Uh, oh wow, he's even got 1300 base defense. That's a crazy. He's a tanky rare. What does a veteran do? This arm attacks one enemy two times, has a 35% chance of placing 50% decreased attack debuff for two turns. Damage inflicted is proportional to defense. And it gets an extra 15%, so 35, 40. Attacks one enemy two times, has a 50% chance to place the big version of decreased attack. And then, oh, attacks one enemy, places 30% increased crit rate on allies for three. Oh, if the ally is killed. So that doesn't do anything with my boss. Attacks all enemies has a 50, whoops, up to 60% chance of placing block buffs. So you can use him in Hydra too. If I pull him, I'll definitely be using him. Because Hydra champions are going to be scarce on this account. No, I, I just did, I did look up Dagger. She had the AoE decreased defense like an 80% chance to land, and then her A3 did the, uh, I think it was a 70%, I just, I, for, I just looked it up. It was like a 70% chance to do it on her A3, the decreased attack. And her A1 does turn meter. Yeah. So yeah, the A1... Attacks the enemy two times. Each critical hit decreases target's turn meter by 4%. So it's not huge, but something's better than nothing. She goes 50, 60, 75% chance for the 60% decreased defense. And then 50, 60, 75% chance of doing big version of decreased attack if they're under decreased defense. So th the fact that she does the big version of both is really good. But unfortunately, it would be really sweet if it was 100% chance on both, but that might be too good for a rare, I don't know. I, I really, really do... I, I You know, I actually f totally forgot about Dagger. Well, I, before I started streaming, I was daydreaming about how cool it would be if there was a rare who can do the big version of decreased defense and the big version of decreased attack. I, I, she complete, I forgot she did the decreased attack. She had, <clears throat> she had slipped my mind. I don't think I've ever built her on any account before. Shield guard's getting closer. I wonder if these guys, these these two rangers or whatever their name is. Oh, it doesn't tell me their name. Oh, that's cool. Okay. This should have been in the game four years ago. This is new. And feeble. Huh. Yeah, this this when I started playing, I didn't know what poisons did, I just thought they sounded cool. So I picked Kale for my starting champion. Cause in my head, like Warlock is my favorite class to play in World of Warcraft, and they specialize in like doing damage over time abilities and like rotting you and killing you slowly over time. That's kinda like their vibe. And when I was looking at Kale's kit, he reminded me of a warlock. So I was like, "All right, let's play. Let's play Kale. He's he's basically the warlock of raid." Um. So yeah, I had no idea what poisons did, or if they were even good. I just thought they sounded cool. It was you know, I just happened to get lucky that he was the best starting champion for a you know a general purpose account. I think if you're if you're gonna do a rares only. I, I would recommend Aethel, just because the big version of Weaken is so hard to come by. At least a consistent... You get what I'm saying. And not only can she do the Weaken, but she's she's a viable wave clear champion because she has a big AoE nuke as well. And she brings her own increased attack buff. So that's just all those things combined. I was just like, alright, we're, we're doing Aethel for sure.
Yeah, so I'm wondering if these guys will hit 30 before he hits 40. I'd be kind of interested to see. I'm just going to drink out of this thing like a cup because I'm tired of it leaking on me. It's still leaked on me somehow. I think I think there was water inside the lid. Alright, well, it's a cup now. Yeah, it yeah. I yeah. Definitely worth it in my opinion. Cause like of all the other champions that I, I pulled up when I was looking up weekend, none of them are that good. I think the one that looks like a dog, I, I already forgot its name. Um, I don't want to go through all that to find it again. I'm pretty sure it's a demon spawn. That, If I recall correctly, that one has an AoE attack too. But I think... I don't know. There, there's some weird restrictions on it. I think he's got a, a partner champion that you have to have on your team. Hold on. I'm pretty sure he's demon spawn. This guy, Hellfang. Okay. Attacks one enemy. 50. It's, not, it's only 75% too. Oh, he has a freeze, but you have to have Hound Spawn. That's why I thought he was kind of cool. Okay. So if you have Hound Spawn on your team, this guy, then he can do an AoE freeze. And then this guy, if he's on the same team as the other one, he will ignore defense and block damage buffs if the target has a freeze debuff. So they have that cool synergy, but you have to commit two spots on your team. And he's got a stun on his A1. That's actually not a bad champion. Like they're they're not terrible, but the problem is like to get like you put them on your team and now you only have three more spots. Like how who do you who else do you bring to flesh out your team? Like it's it's that's kind of the trouble you run into with those uh those tandem champions. It was Seducer in... Uh, I'm not even going to pick that up. I'm not going to... There's no way I finish this fusion. <laughs> even uh, That's another thing. I'm not doing fusions on this account either. Because the whole purpose of this is to... Can I... Okay. I want to make it such that if somebody finds this series a year from now, they could watch it and still gain value from it from an educational perspective. If I use champions that people a month, three months, two years from now don't have access to, if I use those types of champions on this account, it, then the whole thing is pointless. So that's why I'm not using fusions. I'm not going to use this new guy that we got going on the, the, that you can get for the seven-day login. Uh, I'm just going to A1 to put weaken on him. He resisted. Okay. It says in the description, it says each hit has a 75% chance of placing weak in. He resisted the first one, but it didn't uh, try to apply again. Is it really? Is it, is it, is it worded incorrectly? 75, 8. So you're telling me I had a 90% chance on two of those hits and I just failed both times? I find that extremely unlikely. It resisted on the first hit. Dude, this guy is cruising. There's no way this guy is free to play. This guy is allegedly free to play. I'll buy this, because this is. Alright, whatever. I don't even remember seeing this guy. He must have been he must have just changed his name, because this guy wasn't even on my radar until just now. Oh well. I'm, I'm not I'm not worried about the tournament. Like I'm just trying to do what's best for my account farm food and you know <sighs> so when you're doing this new player tournament you get after a thousand points you get four five star pieces of speed gear every single piece I got was absolute freaking trash like not even one piece was usable I was really upset I worked so hard to get that as soon as possible, I was like, all right, now we're cruising. We're going to get that speed gear. Everything's going to be fine. Sunshine and rainbows. And then it was just four, four trash pieces. I was like, 
it stung really bad. Yeah. Anyway, that was a bummer, but I'm over it. I've had accounts where, like, I've gotten double speed rolls on multiple um, pieces from from that, you know. Of the speed gear I acquired from that tournament, I've gotten... I've had instances where I've had multiple pieces get, like, one or more speed. Like, I think I had a 200 speed high Katoon or a Kale, whoever my, you know... I put them on my Kale, and my Kale was, like, 205 speed, like, right out of the gate. It was insane. Like, he was so fast, like, it... It was nuts. And I got hosed on this account pretty bad. It, almost bad enough that it made me want to... I thought about like abandoning this account and starting a new account, <laughs> a new account to try for some good speed gear. But I was like, now nah, let's make this experience as authentic as possible. It's not everyone's gonna do that. I could have though, and then it wouldn't have been that bad of an idea. I would have lost like four hours tops. How are you leaking on me? Is it cracked or something? It's gotta be a crack in this thing. Like, I can't be too upset because it was free. Like, I didn't pay money for it, but the fact that it's leaking water on me is really annoying. Stop it. That's rude. Bring you into my home. This is how you act. Another War Maiden! Hell yeah, dude. Okay, I said when I get four warm, extra War Maidens, I'm gonna try to book my first one. So let's say this is the official War Maiden take her into the... Oh, even... Oh, I can't ascend her. Um, okay. Do I have room to pull? No, I'm, I'm full. Okay. Uh, crap. So, you, 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 you. Go in there. And then the other one's gotta be my mailbox, I guess. Okay, let's go for it. Let's see if we can get this War Maiden booked. Oh, I locked the, lock the wrong one. Oh, whatever. Unlock. Okay. Fingers crossed. For the A3. Damn it. <laughs> did they all go on the A2? No. Most of them did. Yep. Here we go again. All you had to do was go right here. Okay. Well, let's let's lock this war maiden then. And she can hide in the vault for a little while until I'm ready to Alright. I'm gonna wait till I get four more. And then I'll try again. Yeah, I think I think these uh, whatever these are, these dark rangers or whatever they're called, might actually hit thirty before shield guard hits forty. The energy's starting to get low too. Not low, low, but like I think when I woke up today, I had like two thousand energy, and now I'm down to I'm under a thousand. That's always a slog too. I do have some refills lying around. I've just been waiting to pick them up because, like, collecting a refill only gains you energy equal to your maximum energy. So if I would have picked them up when I first got them, I would have gained, like, 20 or 30 energy. But now I have 89. If I can keep leveling up more and more, I'll get more value from them. So I'm just waiting as long as possible before I pick those up. Oh, you're using your epics and legendaries as food? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to be doing, too. I'm going to get a five-star chicken in about four days, so I'm really excited for that. <laughs> might, I might be able to uh, six-star my campaign farmer by then. Yeah, on that on the other 
Rare's, Rare's only plus account that I abandoned a while ago. I pulled a Samson, like the big gorilla uh, skinwalker guy, and I used him as a chicken. <laughs> I was like, all right. Sorry, not sorry. My boys are hungry. <laughs> and you, sir, are made of meat. Which is kind of a bummer, because, like, at that point in time, he was still really new, and I hadn't seen any guides on him. But, because I didn't really have any gear to put on him to make a guide on that account, I was like, well, I can't even, like... I wasn't going to build him just to do a guide on an account where I don't even have the gear, because, like, at that point, six-starring a champion was still really hard for me. So I was like, alright, whatever, he's a chicken. Big hairy chicken. So, what's kind of crazy is like, until I get Lydia, which may be never, War Maiden is my AoE decrease defense champion. Like, once I get her, I'm, I'm set. I, I, there's, unless they make a new one that's better, or m maybe Dagger, but... I, I'm really fond of having a 100% chance to land. It just messes with, like, tuning and stuff if, I don't know. These, we're getting closer. As soon as these hit 30, we'll be able to 5-star somebody. I need to check the arena again real quick to see if I, I probably have a refresh by now. That's been the thing I've struggled with most is like micromanaging my free refreshes. It's something I always struggle with on a new account. Shield guard. Hello. There's a free book. Okay. Uh, upgrade skills. We're getting real close to that cooldown. That's the A1, I think. No, it's A2, okay. So once that's on a two-turn cooldown, it'd be really nice. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, R Arena. Yeah, 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 okay. Sorry, I... <laughs> Four minutes. I don't want to mess with this guy. So then he revives himself. I might be able to do this guy, though. He does have a five-star Gaelic. Which, ooh, okay. This is gonna be sketch. I like think that Gaelic could one shot my whole team. Well, not quite, but. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to put decreased speed on Gaelic. Nice. Kind of balance out his increased speed. Wow. Dude, I'm like. clenched really tight right now. Ugh. Okay, so he's got like regen or something. Not regen. Uh, I think he's got the um, immortal. I saw him get a heal. Okay, now this guy's pretty squishy. I'm not worried about him. He he can hit hard though. All right, that was closer than made me happy. I think the rest of these... Okay, so come back in three minutes and hit that again. Okay. Resuming Operation Farming for War Maidens and Shield Guards for books. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm committing to um, Shield Guard now. I think, I think long-term he's going to be a better farmer than Aethel. Just because that, that skill is on a two-turn cooldown, and when for each crit, he gets a 20% turn meter boost. 
So when he crits all four, he gets an 80% turn meter boost and then basically goes straight away again. Uh, that just that just seems really good to me. He's got a really low base speed, but I think the turn meter boost he's gonna gain from using his A2 kind of offsets that a lot. Now that he's closer to Aethel's level, he's he seems like he's carrying his weight a lot more too. And I think Aethel's got much better gear than Shield Guard does too. Yeah, their, their damage is a lot more in line. Like Aethel's still dealing still dealing more damage, but he's creeping up on her. I just need to get him a really good like defense percentage chest. And then I get the crit rate gloves tomorrow for my login reward. So then I'll just need like a helm, a weapon, or shield to fill out the rest. And I can get that from campaign. So hopefully by the time I five star him, I can get to the bad Alcazar level of campaign and start farming up some decent like odds and ends. You're not a shield guard. I'll let it slide though. I've been getting really fortunate. I've only gotten one Berserker from this stage, and the rest of the rares I've gotten so far have been War Maidens. It's like the exact opposite of my experience last time I, I went through all this. It was like, it literally took me two weeks to farm up enough War Maidens to fully book my first one. It's kind of crazy. And like, literally, all my energy all day was spent here farming for War Maidens. It still took me two weeks. I was so relieved when I finally got it too. I was like, I finally farmed stage 12 3. Start earning some silver. And more XP per. Like, it was just. It was nice. It was very, very nice. I might just use books on War Maiden. Honestly, like, people talk about how you can book her for free. You just gotta farm up the copies. And that's true, but there's also the opportunity cost of less XP per run when you're farming food and less silver per run. So is it really free? Like, you gotta think about what what it's setting your account back. There's, it's not just, you know, I don't know. There's 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 more to consider than just what there is on the surface. But since I can't really farm food on stage twelve at my level yet, this is fine for now. And I'm also getting books for, like, Shield Guard too, so it's kind of a two-for-one at the moment. So there's there's still a lot of value in it for me right now. If I see these in the sh marketplace, I'll pick them up too. Still keeping an eye out for my first Armager too. I'm not ready to build Armager, but I'll, I'll set them aside in the vault when I get them. So he's there. And if I see, come across any of him in the market, I'll buy those too, just because, you know, books. Because, like, yeah, they're just rares. But, like, all my all the champions that I'm going to be using, it's, it's getting close. I was just kind of halfway kidding when I thought these ones were going to hit 30 before he hit 40, but they're catching up pretty quick. Like, if all the champions that I'm using on my account are rares, I'm always going to need rare books to book them. So, it has crossed my mind to just book War Maiden and Shield Guard with rare books, just so I could get them done with. But every champion I build thereafter will also need those same rare books, and rare books aren't as easy to come by as they used to be. Actually, ugh, speaking of that, I just thought of something. So, I bought four so far this week from with Clan Gold. 
I, I picked up this because I figured I'd get War Maiden and I could just... This would be another really easy one to knock out. Place 50 decreased defense buffs on Classic Arena. I do need to build my War Maiden so I can do this to get the Clan Gold to buy more book. I, I can only buy one more book, but I can save the other. I can get energy or something. Forgot about that. She doesn't need to be level... She can do that at level 1, honestly. She just needs to be fast enough to get the debuff out. So I guess I don't have to start building her yet. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I talked I talked I talked through the problem and I came I came up with a solution. We're fine. I want to I want to get these guys settled before I work on anything else. I can just use her to get her faster than Aethel and then we'll be good to go. But Aethel's my I think Aethel's my fastest champion on this account. It's like she's I don't have any speed boots. The struggles are real, man. My gear sucks. I think... I didn't want to spend energy farming speed boots on normal campaign. But when I get to hard, I can get up to four-star gear. So I think at that point, it will be worth it to take time out of my day and farm some four-star speed boots from campaign. Because right now, the most I can get is three-star, and that's just not worth it. It's not worth it. It's a waste of energy, in my opinion. I'd rather, at, at the very least, get like one or two pair of four star speed boots. And then I can start really doing some stuff. So I think that's going to be a priority once I get to hard campaign. But I got to beat normal first, so in the meantime. We're just gonna keep farming, farming food, so we can beat more to macabre. I was really close a couple times, man. I just don't want to keep wasting energy on RNG on whether he gets peril or not. Like, it says there's only a twenty percent chance, but like, ugh, didn't feel like it. Never does, does it? I guess I hit him four different times, so that's like two, four, six, eight. I don't know. I guess when you think about it like that, he's more likely to do it than not. I don't know. Still feels bad. Like he was <laughs> so close. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get it. We'll get it eventually. I did. I did want to make sure that I did that on stream. Um, I beat I, I beat a lot of the other campaign levels off stream. The only one that gave me trouble, really, like really gave me trouble, was the boss on this level, level nine, I think, dragon dragon boss. That was the first time I really had to stop and go back and really farm, because like once I once I got war priest from beating level one, I went through and I beat all the levels with just War Priest and just Aethel, so they were the only two in my party, so they were gaining all the XP. So they were getting they were leveling up enough that they were kind of getting ahead of where the enemies were on the stages. So I was not only A was I three starring all the campaign levels early, so I don't have to go back and do it later. But I was basically putting them on a fast track to level thirty. Which allowed me to not have to go back and farm earlier than I would normally. Normally I get stuck on I forget what level it is. It's the one where you can farm crit rate gear. There's, I think it's the sixth stage of that level. The final wave is a cold heart plus three force affinity dark elves. And they hit really hard. And that's normally the one I get stuck on. And I'll have to go back and farm food and rank people up and all that crap. Normally that's the stage I get stuck on. This one, so level four, yeah, this this chick right here, whatever her name is, she hits really hard, and then a cold heart. So this is the final wave. Normally I get stuck and I have to go back to like this level and farm or something. I don't know, just level up a little bit. But, but because I was going through and beating it with just Aethel and War Priest, same here, like 
they were way higher level than they normally are when I get to that point. So I just smashed through it, and it wasn't until I got to this boss on this level, this boss, that I was like, oh crap, I am stuck. So I had to go back and grind a little bit. So, I, I would recommend doing that, big time. Just your starting champion, starting champion and war priest. Just two-man group, and you'll plow through. Until the, the, you know, there, there were one or two levels that kind of gave me a little bit of trouble, but I was able to kind of just play on auto and work my way through methodically and, you know, it, it wasn't a big deal. I think, I think he's, he's going to get there before these guys, which puts me in an awkward position. Do I... Put in another food champion for shield guard to maximize my energy efficiency and XP gaining per energy, or do I just run? I think I just run the two rangers so they get more XP, even if I'm technically getting less XP overall, just so I can get there sooner. Okay, I'm going to take a drink out of you, and I'm counting on you not to leak on me. Can you do that? No. Apparently it can't. This is weird, because like, it, it's not like dripping. But as soon as I tilt it to drink out of it, all of a sudden it's just like, water finds a, like, I don't even understand. Uh, I'm going to throw this away. Not right now, because it's still got water in it, but... It's kind of a bummer. He had one job, and that's to contain water. Okay, it didn't leak that time. Maybe it was the way I was holding it. Maybe there's a hole in it on one part. I don't know. going in the trash now. Alright, getting closer. If it's not this one, then maybe one or two more and shield guard should be level 40. I don't have any brews, so I'm gonna have to just keep grinding. I've already used all my brews. Um, yeah, I think, uh, okay, a couple more, one or two more. I used my brews really unwisely um, early on to just get Aethel, Warpriest, and Arcanist to like level 30, well, I had just four-starred them, and I wanted to get them levels quickly. I realized the timing that I, like, I don't know. I should have just been patient and saved the brews to, like, crank out food instead of, like, gaining, like, five level, like, tw to go from, like, level 25 to level 30 was a big waste. Okay, so we're going to take him out and just focus on. I'm not going to put a third one in here. Even though it's technically, like, I'm missing out on free XP. I just want to get these guys leveled up faster so I can 5-star my shield guard. Oh, I don't know if Aethel can do this without shield guard on the team. Sometimes, stage 3 like, these guys hit really hard with their A1s. Because they're, they're defense-based and they give themselves Increased defense. Okay, I think we're gonna be fine because of the she's in life steal. So I was trying this earlier and, I, and she failed, but I don't think she was level forty. I think she was like I don't know. She wasn't ascended when I was trying it either, so that she gains a little bit more stats from that too.
Dude, my cat has been sleeping up in his little cat tree all day. Came down to eat some food, and now he's going back up in his little... Hope he's not sick. But, yeah, whatever. He'll be alright. <laughs> I've built up a week and two days worth already. I thought about, like, not collecting those as I was getting them. And just letting them sit until I was ready to use them. But then I realized, like, I'm going to be farming campaign non-stop for, like, the next week. To try to get as many six stars as possible. I'm just going to, like, I'm not not going to use the XP boost. I'll definitely get it. So I, I started collecting them. Man, I was tempted earlier. I, I talked myself out of it. I've got enough gems that I could buy three ancient shards. <laughs> I'm such a freaking junkie, dude. Like, oh no, I don't. I need 270. Okay, never mind. Okay, let me let me check the arena real quick. I think my refresh is probably ready. Yeah. Oh, this is the same guy. We just pl we just played this guy. Uh, I'm assuming I can still beat him. Okay, we're already off to a better start than last time. Let's do a try for decreased speed. Nice. Uh, I know I'm not going to kill Gaelic. I might be able to kill Anax, though. No, not quite. I might be able to kill him before he takes a turn, though. I think, I think, I think he might have, I don't know, maybe not. I, it seemed like for a minute, he had lifesteal gear on. But it might not be lifesteal. I do want to try to get weakened on him. So there it again, it resisted on the first hit, but it didn't look like it even tried to apply on this two second hits. I wonder if that's like a... A typo or what? Or if it just doesn't show it resisting all three times. I don't know. Oh, oh okay. I really do want to try to get weakened on him. I think the A2 hits harder. Um, technically. Like, slightly harder. But if I apply weaken on the first hit, and then I, you know, I do more damage on the two follow-up hits. Do I try this guy? He's got a five-star Kale, which means he could potentially just one-shot me. I don't think so. Wow, these team powers are getting pretty high. I'm over my head. All right, well, we'll be back in 12 minutes. All right. Uh, okay. Let's keep farming food. We're almost there. I just, this reminds me I need to hit, use my clan boss key too. I'm gonna do that real quick. I did decent last time, considering I don't have any poisons or HP burns or anything like that. Where am I at? The three keys in, got 447. So I'm in the novice chest range. Maybe we can still, okay. And what's, I'm not gonna do that in one key. Okay, so let's just hit easy again and maybe we can get a, up our key. Oh, I just put Sister Militant in there. Oops, she, she was level 30. I forgot that she's food now. I, I need. To, I probably should have put somebody else in there. I I could have hard closed the game to reset my key, but it's not worth the effort. I don't know who else I would have put in. Maybe War Maiden, but she would have died just as easy. 
she's not booked, so there's no guarantee that her uh, decreased defense would have even landed. So I would have got I would have got one hit off before she died. So I don't, I don't think it would have made that much of a difference. I wonder if de like my guys had decreased attack on them from the clan boss. But they also had increased attack on them. I wonder if those buffs just cancel each other out. Or if they apply, like, decreased attack was applied first. So did their attack get decreased by 25%? And then when buffed, was it buffed 25% from the, the point where it was decreased? Or do they just cancel out? Like, I've always wondered. My assumption is it gets decreased and then increased. But I don't know for sure. We're doing decent. For no poisons. I I do need to... I have so many things that I want to do. I just got to, like, prioritize. Like, I want to farm dragon so I can get some toxic set and lifesteal gear for everybody. Or toxic set for one... I don't know. Wow, 200k. Not bad. Okay. And where does that put me? 652 total. Because it puts... Oh, I'm still in the novice. Okay. We didn't quite jump into adept. But... Alright, well. That's cool. Oh, we have a million silver. Nice. We broke... And it'll be all gone next time I get a mission to upgrade some gear. Okay, so as soon as these rangers hit level 30, we're going to be able to make our first 5 star. And I, I think I decided on shield guard. We're going to see if, if he's worth the hype. I think last time I tried to farm stage 3, I didn't have life still gear on Aethel. That must have been what the issue was. Because I've I've tried to do this stage 3 before, and those guys at the end just hit too hard and she died. So something obviously changed. I'm trying to think of what that could have been. Is that Russian? If not, I apologize. Uh... I speak only English. What if I can Google Translate? Hold on. Let me try that real quick. Okay, let me let me Google Translate real quick. Oh, hi. How are you? Oh, hi. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, do you understand English? You, you, if you keep typing in Russian, I'll just keep using Google Translate, and we can talk that way. I don't. I don't. That's that's all I that's all I can do. Unfortunately, I was very lazy in high school, and I never took any foreign language classes. So I only I regret it now. But when you know when you're 18, you're just trying to get through it. Or when I was 18, I was just trying to get through it. Okay, so it is Russian. Okay. It, it, it looked like Russian. But I felt bad for assuming. But apparently Google said it is Russian. So if, if, if it's not, you can blame Google. 
feel like I did my due diligence. There is a... Um, I'm going to say this knowing as I say it there's going to be a stigma and people might judge me, but I'm going to say it anyway. I watch ASMR to help me sleep sometimes. And there is a YouTuber, who, a ASMR YouTuber uh, named Lizzie, who was a Russian. And she does really good, like, um, it's like medical role play, so it'll be like as if you're like in the doctor's office or an eye doctor or something. And uh, sometimes in her videos, she speaks Russian, and I don't understand what she's saying, and I find it really soothing because. It's just, I, all I hear is her voice, but I don't know what she's saying, so I'm not focusing on necessarily the words that she's saying. It, it just helps me fall asleep. I'm not participating in the same free-to-play challenge that the other ones are doing. Mine is slightly different. Uh, but this account is free-to-play, so the parameters that I have set forth for myself are I'm only using rares actually let me let me the only champions I'm using from shards are rares and then on top of that I'm also using daily login champions um, and champions that are permanently obtainable to all players for free so these champions here, you know, and then uh, stuff like this. To me, that's fair game because anyone can acquire him eventually if they're willing to grind. And then Drexlar Blood Twin from the Tag Arena Bazaar, he's on the table. Uh, any Doom Tower secret room champions that I can unlock, I will use because they can be obtained for free. So in my opinion, that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, if I can get Arbiter, I'll use her. If I obtain her while following the parameters, I think that's perfectly fine and fair. So, but I'm not going to use these types of champions because they are not permanently free in the game. Any champion that is a promotional champion like this, I'm not going to use. And I'm not going to use fusions either. The reason why is because I want this series that I'm doing to have be forever relevant on YouTube. So if somebody finds this series two years from now, when they're watching it, they're going to be able to re relate to it. So if I'm using a champion that I get that isn't permanently accessible, and somebody clicks on the video, they're like, oh, well, I don't have that champion. This doesn't help me. So I want to make sure that I'm making content that is not only educational, but permanently relevant to anyone who watches it at any point in time. I hope that makes sense. I'll translate this real quick. Show your account. Okay, uh, give me one second. Let me do one more run to get these to level 30, and then I'll show you what I've got so far. Google Translate is so cool. <laughs> I'm communicating with someone who's speaking a different language. All right. Ta-da! Okay. So this is what we got. This was my starting champion. Uh, then I've got War Priest. I've got Arcanist. And Shield Guard. Those are pretty much the only champions that I have gear on and who I've been using to clear campaign. And then I've got 
her, who I plan to use for Fire Knight in the future. I'm saving her. And I've got a War Maiden and Abyssal. I plan to use these guys in the future too. But right now... Um, I'm going to make Shield Guard my campaign farmer. I think that's my plan. Not having space for champions is a real bummer right now. I could use these guys too. Um, this is, this is an alternate account. Uh, I, I have another account that I used to play on, uh, and I played on it for a really long time. That was also a free-to-play account. Um, but I, I quit playing a couple months ago because I got tired of the in-game grind, and I wasn't having fun playing the game. Uh. So, I quit playing that. I haven't played in a few months, and I decided it was time for me to start playing again, but I decided I was going to start a new account and set up a, a, a fresh challenge for myself. Oh. Uh, what? Oh, her. Okay. Uh, no, I don't need that. Okay. All right. Moment of truth. And you know what I'm going to do? I got this barrel from the, uh, what's it called? The Arbiter things. Half a million, half my silver. Boop. Okay. Call of the Arbiter. That's what I got. It was from, um, one of these. I forget which one. So, I don't know. It was, it, it was one of these. Probably the last one. No, that was the chicken. Okay. Uh... I don't know. I you get the idea. It came it came from that. So that's where the barrel came from. All right. Let's see if we can go whoop more Tomb of Cobb's ass now. <gasps> it's hammer time, baby. And we'll get a void shard if we do. So. All right, shield guard. Counting on you, buddy. Eat no, not auto, not auto. That might cost me. Maybe not. I think we'll be okay. Oh. Okay. I see you. I'm excited. Uh, let's heal everybody up. Uh, I don't want to use the AoE because there's two Lord Shazars in the next wave. I want to make sure... Uh, Aethel almost got him, actually. Nice. Alright. I'm just going to ignore the side ads. Try to burst down the boss. Okay, with no peril, that's good. Uh, Aethel will not get heals if I do this now, but if I wait any longer, she'll be dead, so... kind of have to do it. Yeah, see, there she's dead. So if I would have waited, I would have wasted it completely. Uh-oh. Uh, fiery Rage passive triggered. Perils, okay. That sucks, but... Okay, no peril there. Increased attack is useless. I, I see your messages. I'm, I'm just trying to... The A1 hits harder. Has a higher damage multiplier. I'm going to A1... Oh, I dodged a peril. I think I did it. I think I did it. Oh, but I have decreased defense, so I'm not going to hit as hard. Yeah! <laughs> uh, 
All right, let's open that void shard. Hold on. Okay. Uh, let me read these messages real quick. I got to translate them in Google. Uh, copy. Oh, the clan? Uh, just give me a second on that and see what this other one says. Uh... Okay, yeah, okay, sorry. Give me just a second. I'll do that right now. So my clan, we are the Goonies. <laughs> I just joined whatever clan it recommended to me. We're, we're a very low-level clan. Uh... Oh, level one clan, yeah. So, looks like I'm the most active player right now. <laughs> Go figure. But, uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty... I'm the only one taking uh, expert quests in my clan, so that's nice. And this is the clan shop we have unlocked. I've got four out of five rare books this week. So. And then clan boss, in case that's what you're asking, we're still... We have unlocked Brutal. So. Still a very early game clan. I can't look at Hydra yet, because I'm not high enough level. That's where we're at. Um, let's open that Void Shard, baby. I am stoked. Okay. No legendaries, no epics, because I can't use them. We're hoping for Seducer or Cold Heart. Those are my two um, biggest wants. Okay, it's a rare. Uh, Bloodhorn. Hmm. 50% ally protection on two random allies. Okay, that's not great. If an ally is hit with a critical hit, places 15% continuous heal on them for one turn. Okay, so he's like a baby Jarek, kind of. He's not that great. I don't... I might use him for... Actually... He's part of... Yeah, okay. Broadmaw is good. I will fuse Broadmaw. Eventually. He's got a... Two Reviver? Yeah. Okay, so that's... That's like one-fourth of a Broadmaw. I'll take that. So he can go in my vault. For now. Okay, well, we just beat... Normal campaign... Let me translate your message. Sorry, this, I wish I, I spoke Russian. This would be a lot easier. Uh, it's not coming up. I don't know if they're using slang, but I, I, I don't know what you, you meant to type there. I apologize. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, let's grab these. Then, what is this? Attack percentage? No, we're not going to take that. Okay. Let's get to... My goal is to get to... I could... Well, I'm probably not going to be able to three-star the final stage. Because that was close as is. So, never mind. We're not going to do this right now. Oh, well, there's books and gems. Between Aethel and Shield Guard, I could probably three-star just about everything. I, I'm not going to mess with it right now. Let's, let's, let's go to hard. Start clearing hard. Okay, so... Uh, something like that. I'm just going to three-star it now. Or do I want to farm food? Let's just keep farming food. We always need food. Ah. We'll go ahead and do auto. So, I really want to get to the Bad Alcazar level and the uh, Queen Eva level so I can start farming speed and life seal gear. Mostly, I just want some speed boots. And I can get four star speed boots from Hard Campaign. So, when we get there, we're going we're gonna to stop and farm some speed boots for a little while. 
Oh, yeah, tournament points. I forgot about the tournament completely. I think I'm so far behind, it's not even worth, like... The other guy's got, like, twice as many points as I do. The guy who's in first place. If I can get third, I think I still get a rare book, so, like... It's not... Pointless to try... I'm not gonna hurt myself going for it, though. I might switch... Well... I might give the speed boots to... Shield guard now that he's like my. I've committed to making him my campaign farmer. Nice. Aethel's still kicking ass. Let me do that. Uh. That's what I meant to do. Okay. Dude, I, I really need to get some crit rate gloves, dude. Like, so bad. Okay, whatever. Maybe maybe when we get to the, the Bad Alcazar stage, we'll farm some crit rate gloves, too. Alright, let's keep on rolling, baby. Oh, I forgot to put boots on Aethel. I, okay, I need to put boots on her real quick. She's walking around barefoot. Okay. Alright. Uh, Lifesteal is what I need on her. I guess I should have just switched the two around. Defense percentage? Uh, okay. Let's, ooh, shield set! Yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, where did these come from? It must have been from the stage I just did. Accuracy chest. I can put these on... 8,000... Her gear kind of sucks anyway. I lose this fast helm. And if I get really desperate and I... I need to try something like that, that. I'll save that for like a desperation play. If I, I literally just can't beat a level and I, I need some sort of extra support, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the shield set. But right now, I think we're fine. Like the fact that it lasts for three turns is like basically perfect for when you're trying to progress through the campaign because you're never fighting any enemy for more than three turns, it seems like. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much smack. I was gonna say he's pretty tanky, but like they are strong affinity to him, but they're also only level twenty-four, so and they're only four stars. So I don't, I don't want to get too cocky. the The verdict's still out. It's too early to say whether Shield Guard was the right play or not, but we'll find out. Because I know it can be really, really hard. Because I've done it with Kale so many times. Where you get him to level 60 in lifesteal and you're still struggling to farm 12-3. It's not always as easy as it. They make it look on the YouTubes. So hopefully with him being having damage skills off defense, that'll be the difference. Speed boots! Hell yeah. Uh, I might put those on somebody. Oh, found a boss already. Okay. But if I do get to a point, well, I don't know. Well, 
what I was going to say is I might just use rare books on shield guard just to get the cooldown on his A2 to make him a faster farmer. That's another thing too, that two turn cooldown is really nice. Plus the big turn meter boost when he crits with it. Yeah, I think... Nah, we're doing fine. I was going to say I was, I was going to make him uh, target the boss, but boss is playing patty cake over here. Resistance, we're going to sell that. Sorry, my <laughs> sniffing my goatee. My beard smells really nice. My wife got me some um, some beard grooming, a beard grooming kit for Christmas, and it came with a beard wash, beard conditioner, a beard oil and a balm, and it, it's all scented like sandalwood. It just smells really good. <laughs> it's delicious. I guess I could put that shield set on War Priest. I just didn't want to take that helmet off Arcanist because it's a fast helmet. Or the other option would be to go into Fire Knight and try to farm up a, a piece of shield gear that isn't in the helm slot. I don't know. Conventional wisdom says you shouldn't use rare books on uncommons, and I tend to agree with it. But when that uncommon is your campaign farmer, um, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. Do not know. We'll see. We'll keep an eye out. Actually, speaking of keeping an eye out for things, uh, let's check the refresh. Man. Alright, I guess we'll be back in, well, maybe this one? Oh, he's got a deacon? Ah, oh, dude. I get smoked by deacon. Okay. Never mind. Well, maybe this one. Yeah, we'll try it. Ah, he's faster. Okay. Actually, the shield set might be super clutch for uh, Arena, too. Oh, he's got an Aethel and... Or not Aethel. Uh, Elhane and a Gaelic. Uh, she's almost dead. No, okay. Go for the quick pick. Now well, let's see if we can put him to sleep. He's about to take a turn. Nice! Super clutch, dude. Arcanus is... I'm loving having her on my team. Sweet. I think that's probably the only one I can do on this page. I'll come back in a few minutes. Okay. Um... Alright, let me, let me look at that shield set again. Oh yeah, she can wear the shield set. Okay. Her gear is just kind of... I mean, she, she does decent damage when she attacks. But she's, I feel like she has good multipliers. Let's, let's do this. Filter. Fitting room. Try on. Try on. Try on. This chest piece is like... It's not the worst, but man. Really? It had to give me accuracy? I was... Compared to, she loses four thousand HP. No, 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 no. We're not doing this right now. If I get a better shield set chest piece, I'll, I'll maybe try it out. Oh, we already did that. That's right. Sorry, we're here now. I'd have to go to Fire Knight and get a better chest piece. Well, she would lose four thousand HP. So she'd go from like 16,000 to 12,000, but then she'd gain 30% of that in shield, which is about 
3,000. So really she's only losing 1,000 HP and then everybody else gets a shield. It might be worth it. And it would be more... She would actually have more HP than what she was showing because I'd have to upgrade the helm. The helm was only level 1. It might be worth it. I don't know. 4 star. Uh, let's just sell it. Oh, level 10. Okay, let's rank these guys up. Oops, wrong one. Nope, not that either. Um... Upgrade rank, that's what we want. Might have to open some more shards, I'm running out of one stars. Forty-five, jeez. Uh hold on, let me uh, move these over and then I can do two ten pole. Oh no, one ten pole. I guess maybe I should just start working on making two stars instead of one star, or leveling up two stars instead of le Ooh, three star chicken, hell yeah, dude. Don't mind if I do. Take the gems. Now I have enough to buy three ancient shards. Ugh. I am so tempted, dude. I really should save these for masteries, though. All right, struggle continues. But what if there's a Narhorn in there? <laughs> oh, I do love my Narhorn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got hella two stars. Okay, we'll just rank these ones up until 20. That'll clear out a ton of space. What would I want? What would I want to pull? Frozen Banshee, Gnarlhorn, Coffin Smasher. Those would be my top three, I think. No, I'm gonna pass on those. Hmm. Maybe a Grave Chill Killer? That would give me. Like, I wouldn't turn my nose up at it. She's obviously better when you have Frozen Banshee on the team, but... She's still good without. Like, you still get two poisons from her A3, and then an A1 poison. She takes a ton of books, though. To Grave Chill is... She just takes so many books. Maybe I should have kept the accuracy chest for my War Maiden. All right, I'll keep the next accuracy chest. Actually, I could put the shield set on War Maiden because that already has an accuracy. It won't be the biggest shield possible, but she actually wants the accuracy. Some shields better than no shield. Maybe I'll do that. something to think about. Yeah. Okay. I would have kept speed boots. Alright, boss time. Probably could have done this solo with either Aethel or Shield Guard. I probably didn't need both now that I think about it. I could have been farming more food. I just didn't want to waste I don't like wasting energy. I dying dying is a bummer. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever died before, but it's a total bummer. Trying to compare the damage between Shield Guard and Aethel, but she keeps weak hitting. Do I want a defense percentage offense set? No. 
That doesn't make sense, does it? Dun, 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 dun. 100,000 silver waiting for us. Let me try just shield guard and see what happens. Come on, Death Knight, let's roll. Oh, I don't have a... Yeah, whatever. I don't have an aura. He's strong affinity to most enemies here. And he's in lifesteal, so I think he'll be okay. Oh, can she poison? Who's this? I forget her name. Okay, it doesn't show her name. Oh yeah, he's smoking this place. I think it's cool that Blizzard... The ability that guy used against me was called Blizzard, and a place decrease accuracy, which kind of makes sense. Because if you're driving through a blizzard, you can't see anything. It impairs your vision. You would not be very accurate while trying to shoot somebody or, you know, fire a weapon or something in the middle of a blizzard. Mm. I might actually keep this for now. Just... Because he his damage scales off defense. If I if I could like roll up to eight and hit speed or something, speed and accuracy, wouldn't be the worst. Okay, that is gonna get on my nerves. Him not having an aura. <laughs> I wish I would have thought of that before I decided to make him my campaign farmer. <laughs> Dang, I just got owned. No aura. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. Oh well. Just till I find someone better. I guess. Or I guess once my gear is good enough that Aethel can do it in like 7 seconds, maybe I'll, I'll switch to her since she actually has an aura. I want to click that button every time. Oh, heal reduction. That's not good. Uh, that's fine. Alright. If that was a three star, I'd keep it for the same reason I kept the gloves earlier. Just, I'm gonna need filler pieces between the lifesteal gear. I don't know which pieces I'm gonna, of lifesteal gear I'm gonna have and or use. I do have that really good speed helm. I think I have a defense percentage speed set chest with speed on it. I might go chest, helm, speed, and then try to get weapon, shield, gloves, boots, lifesteal. I'll have to check. I forget exactly where those where those pieces are. It's getting close. Okay. Wait. Oh no. Oh, he's already got the chest on. Okay, so speed. Yeah, okay. And then... I would need a lifesteal shield if I... Put this on him. Uh, okay, I don't think I have any lifesteal shields. None worth... I'll get one in a couple days from the login rewards. I don't want to collect these because I know I'm not going to finish it. I'd rather just let them disappear. So they're not sitting in the portal forever. Okay, we're in the running for a book. I wouldn't be mad at the gems either. I've already just realized I'm not going to... I think this guy must have pulled a... a Legendary or an epic early on. Because he got way ahead of me way, way fast. And he's just been pulling ahead nonstop. He's got, he's just all gas, no brakes. Which is fine. I was like, whatever. I, I'm not that worried about it. I think, like, like the extra ancient shard would have been nice. Um, but it's, it's not a big, why did I, 
I just realized he failed this last time I did it, and I forgot to put Aethel back in. I was going to look at its gear to see if I can fix him up. Seems to be doing fine this time around. I know that she can kind of hit hard. Why did he fail the first time? I don't understand. Whatever. Whatever, okay. Seemed did it fine that time. Whenever I'm trying to build like a, a champion to solo what's it called? Minotaur? The girl that I think her name is like Abalaster or Alabaster, something like that. Oh man. Heal reduction, weaken. Uh no, she's not in this wave. She's in the first wave. She she's always the the champion that gives me problems on the second wave. Oh, I think it's the healing reduction that's screwing me up. It's not a 100% healing reduction, but it's like just enough to... Okay. You come out. Mommy Aethel comes in. Muscle Mommy Aethel to the rescue. Wow. Oh, I guess he's level 50, huh? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I was gonna say he one shot the chick, but Aethel didn't. But he's he's higher level. It's fine. Yeah, that was much easier. New champion. Decrease accuracy. That's Blizzard. That's okay. Twenty five percent chance to freeze. Not terrible, but I've already got um, War Priest. Kind of does the same thing. Not the decrease accuracy part, but the A1 freeze. <laughs> I thought about making a... This is something I've thought about for a really long time. I thought about making a... Food champion tier list. Like, what champions are the best to bring with you to farm as food as a new player. Because some, like, and it would depend on where you're at. Like, if, if you're at a point where you can't, you can clear the level fine without dying, but you're not quite where you're one-shotting the waves instantly. There are some food champions you don't want, because if their speed is high enough, they'll cut in and take a turn before you go again, so it technically makes it take longer. So you want slow food champions if you're at that point. But if you're at the point where, like, you're struggling and it's still kind of hard. You can clear it like 85, 90% of the time, but there's that 10% where like if the RNG is bad, you don't clear it. You know, there's there's food champions who can like, like Death Knight, for example, he can sleep on his A1. Like little things like that that can kind of help you out. I don't know. I don't know if anybody would want to watch a food champion tier list <laughs> video or not, but it's one I've wanted to make. I've thought about making it since I started playing, like even before I got into YouTube. Like, this is something I thought about making since I first started playing Raid Shadow Legends. But I just don't know. I don't know if it's if that's... I don't know if that's content that people would tune in to watch. Oh, I'm going to take it off auto since we're on the boss stage. Uh, this one this one right here, this is the one that can hit hard. Like, when I'm trying to make a... A Fire Knight solo champ. This is the champion on the second wave that always gives me trouble. Xalatos got a nice little shield there, doesn't he? Uh, just looking at the turn meters. I think I can kill her with my commons. I'm gonna attack this guy. Oh, she got a turn in. Okay. It was close. If, if it wasn't for that, I was off just a little bit. Okay, I'll go ahead and kill her. She got the turn, and then the heal went off and put her out of range. She 
gonna A1 because we're going into the boss. Okay. He does heal reduction too, that's not fair. Oh well. Ooh! Crit damage. That was crit rate. I would I would consider keeping it. That's all. That's isn't that sad? That's how bad my gear is. Um, let's just keep. I don't want to risk dying and wasting my energy. I'm just gonna keep two in. Then we'll go back to auto. And if once we get to a point where we're starting to struggle, we'll we'll bring our healers back in. But right now, I think we're fine. Like, I'm, I'm kind of torn. Like, one part of me wants to go ahead and build War Maiden. Like, as my next project. The other part of me is like, no, just keep farming food so you can six-star your campaign farmer. And just prioritize that. If I didn't have... I've got the clan quest that wants me to put decreased defense in Classic Arena, which... Feel like it's worth 200 clan gold, but I guess again I I don't have to rank her up to do that. I could just put gear on her and say go. Yeah, okay. Stay the course. Hold the door. I get, I get distracted pretty easily. Let's sell that. Greybeard's not bad either. He does an AoE freeze. It's kind of a low chance to land. But an AoE freeze is an AoE freeze. I'd rather have Narhorn though. He just does a 100% chance to place for provoke on a three turn cooldown. His counterattack buffs are killing me. Dude. And that's another thing, like, he does counterattacks and provoke A1. It's not a bad champion either. Like if he he's one who if I pulled I would consider building at some point. Like certainly for faction wars, hundred percent. But that's not really a super high priority for this account. I kinda wanna just work on getting to like stage twenty dungeons first and then you know, start spreading it out. Like I'll probably do Dragon Twenty first priority. Dragon 20 slash clan boss, priority number one. Like, clan boss is always going to be in my peripheral vision, like, something I'm working towards. But I can't build a clan boss team without the right champions. Or the right gear, so. So yeah, Dragon 20 first, and then kind of work on the other dungeons on the side as my gear gets better. Clan boss in arena. Uh, arena is another thing I need to focus on too, because I need to farm the metals for my great hall. <sighs> the great hall just so much value in there. I thought I thought that uh, shield guard was going down there for a minute. Yikes. I'm getting hosed. Might have to bring a real team in. No, I think we're okay. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Alright, cool. So this is the stage that normally gives me trouble. Because of the affinity. They're level 50 too. 
Or they're level 50 also, they're not level 52. Um, if I get stuck here, I might have to make another level 50. Actually, I'm not even gonna, let's just go ahead and uh, put our A team in. Where'd they go? Oh, I put them in the, that's right. They're in the vault. Uh, master vault. Okay. First wave is easy. There's the freeze. Yeah, okay, that's the same champion. Yeah, the, um, the AoE freeze combined with an A1 provoke and a self counter attack buff makes him a lot better than it. I think he's got like a crazy defense aura too. Forget what it is, but it might. I have to look it up. It's some something crazy. If if I'm remembering correctly. Hey, nobody died. Cool. Flat HP. Yeah, ally defense and dungeons by 30%. This guy's... This is a really good rare, actually. AoE freeze, A1 provoke. That's a 75... No. 70% chance to provoke on the A1, and then he gives himself a counterattack buff. It's not bad. I'm gonna... Take, Jesus is going to take the wheel with the boss fight. I guess they're all the same affinity. Oh, okay. Um, let's see if I can freeze one of these guys. Maybe I could put one to sleep. No? Maybe I could freeze? Nope. So without books, he only has an 80% chance to place the counterattack buff, which is kind of funny. That's why he didn't get it there. Maybe I could sleep this one. No. Can't counterattack if you're asleep. Trying to think if I wanted to heal or not, but we'll get the heal as we go into the next round. All right, decrease speed, perfect. Let's see if we can put a weaken out. Nice, very good. And these strong affinities will do the attack. We'll do the increase attack on War Priest since she's weak affinity. And Shield Guards A1 just does more damage. So we're just gonna A1 with Shield Guard. Uh, I don't think I need to heal right now. All right, we'll go ahead and heal on Arcanist on her next turn. Weaken is still up, so we'll do this. That skill hit's just a little bit harder. I uh, probably should have done the increased attack. Alright, that's, that's fine. This doesn't matter. I'll do the increased attack on War Priest. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> just kidding. It's on cooldown. I could have done the extra. I wasn't thinking. I kind of just went on autopilot.
probably just hit auto at this point. I don't know what I was so scared of. Ooh, four star gloves. Flat attack. Womp womp. Alright, well. Ooh. 25 gems. Okay, this is where it kind of starts to get hard. Like, maybe not. I got spirit champions. Normally, this is where it starts to get hard. Because everything is. All the waves are just all force enemies for the most part. And there's a man eater on the last level of one of these stages. Or the last wave of one of these stages. Uh oh. Need to make sure we kill this wave before Aethel dies to the bomb. So I don't want to take the extra turn. If she took the extra turn, then the bomb would have gone off already. I don't think we're going to get there. I think Aethel's going to get the bomb. Ooh, okay, that wasn't so bad. All right. I was overreacting. The bomb was fine. I'm just going to hit auto. Dude, those guys aren't playing around. Huh. Keep that for now. I think my cat has bladder problems. She's in the... In the litter box, like, every 20 minutes. Alright, there's a man-eater. Focus him. Kill this guy. This guy right here. Ah, dang it. Alright, too late now. I remember playing this game for the first time way back when. Like, not knowing what any of these buffs and debuffs meant and having to kind of figure it out the hard, like, you know, the hard way. Like, oh, I can't kill these guys. And then getting all salty because they were not killable. And, you know, I don't know. It's cool. It was fun discovering the game for the first time. I wish I could go back and experience that again. I've I've been tainted by knowledge. I can never truly have that. There are some things I wouldn't change though, like back in the old days of raid before they had the dressing room, it was so hard to gear champions or the fitting room, whatever it's called. Oh my gosh. So what I would do when I wanted to gear a champion is I would take a piece of notebook paper and a pen and go through every single piece of gear on my account that I was interested in equipping and then writing down the set it was from, the slot that it was in, and what the, subs, the stats and substats were. And then I would write down all the potential pieces of gear that I, th I was interested in equipping on that champion and then just do that until like mixing and matching like I would basically make a spreadsheet on a piece of notebook paper of all the pieces of gear I wanted, I was interested in. And then I'd go through and like, okay, well, this is going to be my campaign farmer, so I need a 100% crit rate and like just all these different things and like calculating the stats. I was like, okay. And I, it would take me like an hour to like figure out which six pieces of gear I want to put on a champion and go through and manually equip them and then realize you made a mistake and now you, you, know, you only have 99% crit rate or whatever, like stupid stuff like that, like... Oh my gosh. Like, the fitting room is probably the biggest change. Crit rate. They're only two star, but they're in a really good set. I'll keep them. I don't, there's no rush to sell them. Alright, we got a Narhorn, aka the goat, literally and figuratively. Eh, we. Uh, I was going to put it on manual so I don't, wouldn't have to worry about him making himself unkillable, but 
it's not gonna. If I fail this run, it's not gonna be because Narhorn made himself unkillable for two turns. But we'll give him the old clicker Rooney. Ah, okay. Aethel, you, got, you, you, you dropped the ball. You had one job. Alright, well, he did the, the provoke first, so we're good. Alright. Man. I don't, I, I don't think people realize HP percentage. It's only two star, but my gear is so bad that that's actually good. Like if, if you didn't play before the, the fitting room was a thing, you do not realize how big of a deal that was. That was. That was like as big, if not bigger, quality of life than the... Um, AI configuration update. Like, man. Because, like, I, I have nothing but respect for Hell Hades. So just understand that. This is not a diss. I just personally don't like to use the, the optimizer. Because for me, it's fun to figure it out on my own. I'm the type of guy who really likes to tinker with stuff and learn from doing it. So to use, it's not, I do not find enjoyment for using tools like that. However, I see the value in tools like that. I understand that they're helpful for a lot of people. And I'm glad that it exists. It's just not for me personally. So. But man. I couldn't even imagine. I don't know. I'm just going off on a tangent about. <laughs> how crappy life was before the, the fitting room it was wild like the fact that the game released without it or anything like it is just mind boggling like gearing champions was so stupid Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I guess it's fine to kill those guys first. This, this war chief, as it exists as a boss and campaign, is not the same as war chief as he exists as a champion in your collection. This war chief will put a counterattack on himself. So I want to attack him before he puts it. Yeah, there's a counterattack. So now that the counterattack is on him, while I wait for it to fall off, I'm going to attack his little goons over here. Because I don't want to get counterattacked. I'm going to do this to give myself increased defense. Uh, uh, crap. Ugh! Crap. That's not good. Okay. Lesson learned when you're going into the boss stage. Take off manual. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Get a heal going on everybody. Okay, counterattack is gone. Decreased speed is good. Uh, we're just gonna get the attack off. And once he does his counterattack buff thing again, that's when I'll do the increase it. I'll, I'll spend a turn giving everybody increased attack instead of actually just attacking him. And I'll save the heal for when he's. Okay, he's got the. Oh, he provoked. What is this weird version of Warchief? I don't, I don't understand. Oh, he's gonna die. Anyway. Okay. Alright, fine. 666, metal AF. Ooh, what? Yo. Oh, I've had that for a second. Yeah. I'm still waiting. So I'm completely out of energy before I claim this. Hopefully I can get to 100 energy as my max at least before I claim those. That would be nice. Same thing with this one. I'm just going to let that sit there. But I can level up a few more times and I'll get 100 energy out of it. What is this? What do you want? What do you want? Nobody cares. Mark all is red. Okay. Uh, back to campaign. We're back to a million silver. Oh! <gasps> We can farm speed boots now. All right. I want to. 
wonder if Aethel can... Maybe Shield Guard, because it's Spirit and Force. I just want to see. There's a... Here he is. Okay. We're going to try. Let's see if this works. I'm just going to see if we can do it on auto. Now, he's, he's not fully booked yet, so... Man, they just got their whole booty out, don't they? <laughs> just, like, no shame. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not complaining, but... Must be warm in this region. I mean, she's got her booty out, too, but she's wearing a cloak, at least. Yikes. Okay, these guys are stomping me. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to see if you could do it. We're not quite there yet. My gear is still absolute trash. Um, maybe... I keep getting intermittent missions to rank up more gear to level 12. But... Don't see another one coming. Oh, equip to no. Okay, I mean it's not. It is, but it isn't. Two attack champions, level twelve balance. Are you kidding me? Equip two attack champions with level twelve plus gauntlets, boots, and a chest plate with attack percentages their primary stats. So I have to farm. And then I have to invest the silver into them to level them to 12? What a waste of resources. Okay, so I don't have any more missions to upgrade gear to 12, which is what I was waiting for before I upgraded more gear to 12. Also, the gear I have is kind of trash. But in the meantime, this is a decent enough chest piece. So we'll go to 12. Why does it take so long? Why is there a pause between each attempt? It didn't used to do that. I know it didn't. It was like... Just constantly go. Not pauses in between. It's like they're trying to piss off their player base. <laughs> what I look for in a game, when I'm getting into it for the first time, is... How much potential does this game have? Because games are never perfect when they come out. There's iteration... There's improvements, there's updates. When I started playing Raid, I was like, wow, this game has a ton of potential. And despite how much potential it has, player, it seems like at every turn, Plarium makes these stupid decisions. Hey, we got a speed roll. Makes the worst possible decisions at every turn just piss off their players. That's what it feels like. <laughs> I don't uh, I don't know who that is, but I'll take it as a compliment. Let me let me look that up. V Vsauce YouTuber. Okay, hold on. Let me see who that is. <laughs> okay. Alright, I can kind of see that. Is this here? Yeah, I mean, I can see the resemblance. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, you're not wrong. I, I do kind of look like that, dude. Alright. What a handsome guy. Oh, defense! That's awesome. That's more damage. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to roll these gloves. This, that speed and accuracy is not... Terrible. All right, we'll we'll, we'll 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 keep on pushing. What? I thought I beat this. Am I taking crazy pills? Maybe I didn't. Did I? I feel like I beat this already. 
Maybe I didn't put the whole team in. I don't know. Hey, man, I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. The, the reason I got into YouTube is because I feel like a lot of the much larger raid YouTubers, because they've made so many videos, when they make new videos, they don't go back and explain things thoroughly because they've already explained it a thousand times. But what I think sometimes they forget is just because I'm watching this video doesn't mean I've watched all those other videos. So when they make a new video, they don't always cover what they covered in their old video. So I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't do that, if that makes sense. Like whenever I'm making a guide about a specific topic, I tr sometimes, and I'm guilty of this too, sometimes I forget to do that, but I always in my head think like, Okay, let me make sure that I'm explaining this in a way that someone with no knowledge will understand what I'm saying. Um, yeah. Especially with Clan Boss. There's so much to Clan Boss. So, when I'm making a guide like that, I'll, I'll make sure I'll stop and like write a script beforehand and then record a voiceover to make sure that... By writing a script, I know, like, I could read it and be like, oh, did I forget anything? Like, and sometimes I do. Like, I mean, I'm not perfect, but I'm not saying, like, I'm the best Raid Shadow Legends YouTuber the world has ever seen or anything. But I, I do try to make it a point to make sure that I'm explaining myself thoroughly in every guide I do like that. So I'm glad to hear that they helped you. That makes me happy. Man, Arcanus is just getting stomped. I guess she's weak affinity, isn't she? Okay, no, that's fine. I'm not gonna mess with it. Dude, that guy attacked like four times in a row. Wait, what, what? Hold on, who is that? Marksman? He, oh, hold on. No, not Secret Order. What? Attacks one enemy, places a poison. If the attack is critical, has a 25% chance of granting an extra turn. Did he just chain four attacks in a row? Like, he, he attacked me four times in a row. See, attacks one enemy. Oh, attacks four times at random. That didn't feel like that was four times at random. It felt like he was using, his, he just used his A1 four times in a row. <laughs> that's that's if, if he did that's wild that's kind of crazy okay damn that thenisil is nuts pretty underrated champion too I'd say he does a huge heal and places a 60% increased defense. On my first ever account, I think Thenisil was one of my first epics. Um, I assumed you meant rare. As I was reading that, seems like a good rare for the challenge. Uh, are you talking about Arcanists? Or which, which rare? There's a slight delay in the stream, so I don't know who I was talking about when you typed that. She is really good. I was initially putting all my eggs into the, the War Priest basket. Uh, and as soon as I leveled her to 40, I pulled Arcanist. And if you compare their kits side by side, Arcanist is just pretty much better in every way. But I've also found it's just really nice to have two healers and two damage dealers. Oh, Marksman. Marksman. I think he's an epic. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he's an epic. I think, yeah. Purple border. But yeah, he would be dope if he was a rare. Yeah, I, I need a good... I, I specifically went with Aethel as my starter. Because I think she's the only rare who has a 100% chance to place Weaken. The big version of Weaken when she's fully booked. So, if I didn't go with Aethel, I would have had to level a different champion for Weaken if I wanted that on my teams. Until I fuse Rosin. And I don't know, it's going to be a while before I fuse Rosin. So just, you know, having access to the big version of Weaken early on is going to be really good, I think. And there's tons of good rare, like... If, if I went with Kale, I would replace him as my poisoner with Frozen Banshee eventually. But with Aethel, there's no other rares that I would replace to do the big version of Weaken. So that's kind of, that was kind of my logic when I went with her. Is she will be replaced. She's harder to replace, I guess is what I'm trying to say. She's, she's a lot more unique. Kale can be replaced pretty easily with a, a better... There's better poisoners than Kale in the rare slot. No, it's all good, man. It, not a big deal. Okay, when we get to this attack percentage... Speed set attack percentage. It's only two star. I'm better than that. I deserve better. I am going to farm for some speed boots. Maybe? Yeah, uh, there's. I actually just looked it up, uh, like maybe about an hour ago or so. I was talking. I was talking about this earlier. When someone, we were before you arrived. We were having the conversation, and I looked it up on hellhades.com. And I think there's like four or five rares who can place the big version of Weaken, but none of them can do it with a hundred percent chance to land, except for Aethel. And she does it on her A1, too, which is, like, makes it really good. And for Clan Boss, once I get her Masteries, I take Giant Slayer. And, I, and her A2 hits slightly harder than her A1. But for Clan Boss... If I have Giant Slayer, then I'm just gonna want to a. I'm gonna use her A3 to give herself increased attack, and then just A1, 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 A1. Keep weaken on, and get as many Giant Slayer procs as possible. Okay. Now the question is, do I farm for speed boots here, or do I farm for speed boots here? I guess I don't have to do it right now. I do want... I don't know. I'm gonna do this one on manual, though. I'm starting... Man, my energy is running out. Maybe I'll just get super lucky and get a pair of four-star speed boots from this boss. Also, she, she's... The fact that she buffs her own attack... Like, she doesn't have the highest damage multipliers of all the starting champions. But the fact that she buffs her own attack makes her a lot better in a vacuum in some instances. Well, in a lot of instances. Mm, I should have done this one. He, was, he had the highest turn meter. And Arcanus is getting her... She's getting donkey punched, I guess. That's, that's how I'll choose to put it. Yeah, Lifesteal is quite nutty. I'm not prioritizing it as highly as I normally would on a starting account, just because I do have two 
pretty good healers. Like, War Priest isn't a great healer, but she's a decent healer. Like, what I like about her is she's a healer, but she can also kind of hit hard. It's always single target, but she does decent damage. And she's a different affinity than my starter. So that makes her good there for when I have to fight against like force affinity waves. And Arcanist is also force affinity, which makes Arcanist really great. Um, and and War, War Priest... No, it won't let me pull it up from here. I gotta put these in so I can pull these out. She's only got a... 15% chance to freeze on her A1. Just kind of low compared to Arcanist's 20%. Even though it's only 5%, I see this freeze go off so much more frequently. Like, it's kind of crazy the difference the 15% to 20% makes. Like, I, she freezes people all the time. I could almost count on her to do this. And while freeze is probably a better crowd control ability, if you're... If you see that there's an enemy on the team that's about to go, you just target that one if they have really high turn meter, and then it's, it, you know. I forgot the point I was trying to make when I, <laughs> when I went in there. But there there was one, and I just forgot what it was. Hmm. Oh! Lifesteal gear. We were talking about lifesteal gear. Yeah, I, I'm not necessarily prioritizing farming lifesteal as much since I do have two decent healers. If I didn't have, if I didn't pull the Arcanist and all I had was War Priest, I would probably definitely make, I don't think I could beat any of these teams. Uh, I would definitely make, I mean, lifesteal is still going to be great. Um, for sure, I just, I definitely want a good lifesteal set for Shield Guard, since he's going to be my campaign farmer. But it's, it's going to be great for clan boss, every dungeon, like, yeah, for sure. I think what it's going to come down to is how easily Shield Guard can farm the lifesteal gear level. Uh, it's, I know Aethel is going to struggle with it because most of the enemies are force. That, that's one of the things that I always struggle with whenever I make a new account is beating that stage because it's so force enemy heavy. So Shield Guard's going to be my farmer for that level. If he struggles to farm that level more than Aethel would struggle to farm the speed gear level. Like it's going to come down to which one I can farm easier I guess is what I'm trying to say. Whichever one is easier for... Whichever one is easier for me to farm is probably where, where I'll farm. Until I start doing the Deadlands again, and then I'm going to farm some more books for my War Maiden and my Shield Guard. This Tree Feller right here. I think that's her name. Yeah, Tree Feller. I think. Whoever that is. My first run through campaign... She surprised me and hit me really hard a couple times. I'm gonna kill the seer if I can. No, okay, oh, okay. She didn't do her nuke. She did give a crit rate buff to everybody though. Four star. I might just keep that by virtue of being four star. I don't have much four star gear yet. I'm wondering if. I would have taken more time to farm dungeons to get like better pieces of gear if I would have had an easier time working my way through campaign. And it's it's something I considered. And at the same time, I'm like, man, I just kind of just want to farm food. So I wasn't that worried about it. I would have had a harder time farming food in dungeons. I don't know. What am I going to do about Spider? Uh, curl up in the fetal position and cry. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I discussed this since you've arrived, but I did I did mention it at the top of the stream, but I'll, I'll cover it again for the new people who are coming in. So 
the parameters of the challenge I've set forth for myself are rare. the only champions I'm going to use that I pull from shards are rares and lower. And then when it says rares only plus, the plus to that is daily login champion. So like Hikatoon, very high on my priority list. Uh, obviously still the Drakes, you know, physics, like all of these daily login rewards. Uh, things that can be acquired forever for free through some sort of in-game grind like Yakarl the Scourge. He's permanently available. Uh, if I can acquire Arbiter, I'm going to use her. Uh, Drexlar Blood Twin from the Tagarina Bazaar. He is on the table. However, I'm not going to be using promotional champions like this. And the reason why is because if somebody tunes in after this promotion ends and they're looking for help to try to figure out how to overcome these obstacles, if I'm using a champion they don't have access to, in their mind, these guys are worthless. So I'm only using champions that are rare, login rewards, and champions that are permanently accessible through some sort of in-game grind. So that includes Doom Tower Secret Rooms, it includes, uh, I don't know who this is. I don't think these champions can be, I don't know, I'm on the, I don't, I've, I've, she, this has been introduced since I quit playing and since I started again, so I don't know if this, I'm going to count this or not. I'm leaning towards no at the moment, because I don't know enough about these, st this stuff. Uh, Relic Keeper, Rosin, Broadmaw. So these three for sure. You know what, if I could summon these champions from shards, eventually, nah, I feel like it, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll we'll cross that. That's a that's a long ways away. Right now, I'm leaning towards no. I can be persuaded, but I'm not going for fusions either, for the same reason. Like if someone tunes into this series and they're looking for guidance on how to make a budget friendly team for this dungeon or that dungeon, and I'm using a fusion champion that they weren't around to fuse themselves, they're gonna be like, well, this guy is trash. I don't have that champion. It's not gonna help me. So I want this to be as relatable and as educational as possible for as long as possible. I think the best way to give this series longevity is to do it that way. So, that's that's the goal. But there's always going to be people who, co who complain in the YouTube comments. You're using that rare champion? I don't have that rare champion. This guy is trash. You know, like, <laughs> you see stuff like that every now and then. You gotta not let that kind of thing get to you. Unfortunately, it comes with the territory. Okay, he's no longer. Okay, let's just let's just let's Jesus take the wheel. All right, here we go. Dang! Oh man, I'm getting smoked. Ugh! The counterattacks are killing me, dude. Uh. Okay, counterattack buff is gone. They still have ally protect. Um, I think spike head hits pretty hard. Hey, yikes! I don't know if I should heal. Actually, kill him so ally protection disappears. Decrease speed. No. Okay, it's worth a shot. I don't think these guys can kill my two healers, so I'm just gonna just hit auto. Oh, there's a freeze. Yeah, the freeze doesn't come out that often. I don't know if she just doesn't have enough accuracy or what. That's true, it is a permanent fusion. You're correct, and that, that would technically fall within the parameters of the challenge I set forth. But in order to acquire that champion, I would need to acquire some very specific epics it looks like so but you know who knows another thing that I was on the fence about is whether or not I would allow who's the um, the one you get the refer a friend HP burn guy I won't be using him 
for the majority of content. But I know that when I get to a point on this account where I'm ready to farm Sand Devil, that's probably literally the only way I'll be able to do it is by getting grinding out that guy and earning him and doing the because his partner champion has a passive that will revive him when he dies if they're on the same team. I think that's the only way I'm going to be able to do Sand Devil. Because there's no revive on death rare champions except for Magistrate, which is the apothecary ripoff looking guy. So he's the only one, and he only does it on himself. So aside from Magistrate in a toxic set, trying to solo... Like, there's no way in the hell I'm going to be able to beat Sand Devils. It's just literally impossible. At least the high end. I could probably find a champion who can clear the low levels. Um, but there's no way I'm beating stage 25 without that guy. It, it, it's just literally not possible. So, I, I don't want to do that. Because, A, I don't want to grind it out. Like, do six referral accounts to level 50. Like... That's not fun. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And also, I feel like if that's my solution, then I've failed in a way. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just me being too hard on myself, but... I really want to kill him before he can do... Or at least put him to sleep. No, okay. War Priest is too slow. She's not going to get a turn before he goes. Damn it. Okay. Well, let's do the heal now since so we don't get counterattacked. I'm not going to do the AoE because I don't want to get counterattacked. Um, okay. I really want to kill Zargala. But I'm weak affinity here. Because if she, if she does her A2 and kills somebody, then she'll also A3. And it hits really hard and decreases defense. Yikes. Okay, counterattack is gone. Let's go ahead and AoE. Alright, I think we're good. I'm just going to hit auto. It looks bad, but I think we're fine. Yeah, I I, I didn't even know that Mythic Fusion existed. I I, I quit playing about two, two or three months ago. Because I just kind of got bored and I felt like as an endgame player, my time wasn't being respected. Like, the only place in the entire game where I felt like I was getting legitimate value for the energy I spent was Iron Twins. And they artificially inflate your in-game time by making it so you can't just farm that over and over. They put a limit on it to six keys a day. And then if you want to spend more than six keys, you can spend 200 gems, and then you can spend another six keys, and that's it. So that was really frustrating. They didn't have to do it that way, but they chose to. Um, because they know that there's good value there, and that's where endgame players want to spend their energy. But they put the artificial time gate there to keep players playing longer. Like, you have to come back day after day to, you know... And that was annoying to me. I felt like they did me dirty. I'm going to try to put this guy to sleep. He's got a high turn meter. Okay. Um, yeah, so that that was sour, and then, like, Sand Devil Dungeon is not really, like, I don't feel like I get value for my energy there, so that was a bummer, and then the Shogun Dungeon, that was, like, the next big update, and I didn't feel like I was, that was worth farming, like, it's such, such minimal, so much effort for such minimal gains, just, it's not a good feeling, so, you know, I was just getting frustrated, so I, I just quit for a while. I don't know, I logged in the other day to help somebody test something. And then I was like, alright, I kind of want to play Raid, I missed this game. But I didn't want to do it on my in-game account because, you know, none of the issues that I have with the game have been addressed or fixed. I still don't feel like I get... I don't feel like my time as a player is being respected as an in-game player. But progressing through the game is still kind of a lot of fun. And I enjoy the challenge. So, I will enjoy the... Uh, the new player experience while it lasts and have fun on this account and put a little challenge ahead of myself to see if I can beat it using only rares and free champions. Maybe I'll help some people out along the way.
So, here we are. Oh, he, he revives himself. I was like, I'm pretty sure I killed that guy. I was looking at chat. I didn't see him pop back up. HP percentage boots. Uh, no, I'll sell those. All right, boss time. Uh, we're going to go full manual so we don't do what happened last time. I was just thinking, do I want lifesteal for my two support champions? Probably not, actually, now that I think about it. Because they don't have AoEs, so they're not going to get as much value from it. We can just get, let's see if we can maybe get lucky and freeze one of these guys. No. Yeah, the I. so my last account was still a free-to-play account. And it was a lot of fun, like, trying to do it free-to-play, because my first account wasn't free-to-play. So, what had happened was, um, I started playing Raid, spent a lot, um, like, I would buy Ancient Shards every time they came on sale, because I just felt like, of all the things I could buy, Ancient Shards were the best value. It's like, even if you don't Pull an a, a, you get more of them for your more total shards to open, which is exciting when you're a gambling addict. You know, more to open at once, so more chances at something cool. And even if you don't open anything, you're still getting lots of chickens to rank up the champions you do have. So, at worst case scenario, I was buying a bunch of three-star chickens. That's the way the way I justified it in my mind. Um. So, you know, every time Ancient Charge would come on sale, I'd buy them. Buy them up. Um, and then I finally pulled my first Legendary, and it was Tila Gourmane. Now, now, since she's been buffed, Tila Gourmane is great. You know, you'd be happy to pull a Tila Gourmane. But back then, she was trash. And that felt bad, playing the game for f four months and your first Legendary being a trash Legendary. Like, nobody wants that. So that was really depressing. And back then, we didn't have the daily shop offers that pop up, like, where you can get... Sometimes they'll give you energy, or sometimes they just give you, like, forged resources. Um, uh, I'll see if I can put this guy to sleep. No, okay. So, there was... They were far less generous with the free daily rewards that you would earn in the game back then. Um, so, I would be wanting to kill time at work. So what I would do was I'd make a free-to-play alternate account. And a lot of us in my clan were doing that back then. We would have a, a free-to-play alt account so we'd have something to do when we ran out of resources on our main account. Without just like buying more energy. Well, I started a free-to-play account, and my third Ancient Shard on that account, I pulled Altan. And that was before Iron Brago came out. Back then, Altan was the man. Like, if you wanted a top-tier clan boss team, you needed Altan. Like, that's just how it was. He was the best decreased attack champion. His damage scaled off defense. He hit really hard. Like, so I was like, you know what? This is my new main account. <laughs> Mountain King, yeah, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> Hit that like button. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Yeah, so like, I pulled Altan on my third Ancient Shard. And then on day 13, so one day before I got Jizzo from my daily logins, I decided I'm going uh, to do a 10 pull. There wasn't any event, I just wanted to do a temple because I was itching. I'm an addict and I wanted to pull my shards. I do the temple, on the 10th champion, Queen Eva comes out. Who isn't the best, like, champion, but when you're 13 days in, that's a really good campaign farmer. Like, she only needs, like, 66% crit rate because of her passive and her aura and everything. Like, she was so easy to gear. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I... I in here with food crap oh well 
Um, anyway, so so two weeks in, I have Queen Ava and I have Altan, two really cool legendaries. And then on my my old account, I just had Tila Gourmet who sucked at the time. So I'm like, crap. Well, that sucks. I guess this is my new main account. So I ditched. <laughs> I basically started over four months in because I had two legendaries on this account, and that became my new account. And I, I spent tons of money on that account, like more than I care to admit. I wasn't like a huge whale by like raid shadow legend standards, but you know, if playing another game like I used to play Hearthstone, for example, if I spent on Hearthstone what I was spending in raid, I would be like a super giga whale in Hearthstone, to put it in those terms, I guess. And I just kept getting frustrated, like it never felt like I was getting my money's worth when I would spend money on the game, and I was just getting super frustrated with it. So shortly after Ninja came out, I, 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 sorry, let me backtrack. When Ninja came out, I made a free to play alternate account because I knew Ninja was going to be good. But reading YouTube comments, people were like, oh, man, this champion sucks. I'm like, are you crazy? This champion's insane. So like to prove to my not myself, if to no one else, like for my own self validation, I made a free to play alt account with Ninja. And I played on that for a while, and then shortly after, maybe like three months or so after Ninja came out, something happened, and I, I rage quit the game. I got fed up with some BS. I've rage quit raid like four or five times over the years. Like, <laughs> Plarium just knows how to push our buttons as players. Anyway, um, but a few months went by, and I was I stayed in my clan Discord because I've been playing with my the same clan since the very beginning. Like I've, I've I've been with these guys for almost four, probably four years now, and I still pop in for social reasons on the on the Discord, even though I wasn't playing. And they kept they kept like they reeled me back in. It's like like hey, when are you gonna play raid again, man? Hey, we miss you. You know, come play raid. You know. So eventually, I was like, all right, fine. But I'm not spending another dime on this freaking game. I hate Plarium. So I log into my main account, and then within ten minutes. I bought the monthly pack, the one that comes with the sacred, the voids, and the ancients. Pulled all the shards, got nothing, and I was furious. I'm like, I quit. I can't. I'm an addict. I can't resist spending, and when I spend, I instantly regret it. Like, I hate this game. So I logged out, and I was like, you know what? I got that free-to-play account. I'll tell you what. Maybe I'm just a free-to-play player now. So I logged into the alternate free-to-play account that I had made to see how Ninja was, and that became my main account. And I've never spent a dime on Raid Shadow Legends since. So that's kind of like my origin story, I guess. I don't remember why I was telling that story, but I've started over from scratch so many times. <clears throat> like, when I pulled Altan on my what once was my free-to-play alt account that then became my pay-to-win main account, and I started over again with the the ninja account, and that was the account that I've been making all my video. All, I've, all the old videos I made were made with the the ninja free to play account. So yeah, I don't know what led me down that road, that tangent, but that's how we got to where we are today. I hope that was an entertaining story. <laughs> Or rant, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this lady does an ally attack, so I want to kill her. It's a just a like a yeah. It's just, it's just like a like a one person ally attack. It's not a full team wide, but it's just enough to be annoying. Nice. As sometimes. Like, this this is a really fun game. From a core mechanic and, like, engineering perspective, like, the way this game is built, it's really well done. Like I said earlier, this game has so much potential. But it seems like Plarium is doing everything they can in their power to squander that potential. It's like, the people who make the game... Great. The people in charge of decisions who are probably the boss of the people who actually make the game, horrible. <laughs> you know, like, it's like the evil corporation comes in and tries to ruin it. I feel bad for the people who actually 
clearly, the game developers who clearly love this game and worked really hard to make a great one. Because I feel like they're just getting dumped on by the, the people who are their boss. Because you can tell that, the, like, serious love went into this thing. This isn't some just pile of garbage. You know, it's, it's a good game. It just, you know, gets done dirty by corporate greed. Yeah, and here's the thing. In terms of, like, my free-to-play alt account, because I was, like, I'm not just saying this, I was addicted to buying shards and opening them. It, it was an addiction for me. I, I, I almost relapsed a few times. Like, there were, there were, I remember I was struggling really hard, and in the game, I mean. And then a, a, a void shard pack went on sale, and I wanted to buy it so bad, I was like, dude, I... It's three shards, man. Like, I, I need... Like, I literally felt like I needed it. Like, addiction is the only words I could think of to describe how I felt. And I almost slipped and bought the shard pack. But I went to my clan Discord. And I was like, hey, guys. I really want to buy this pack. And then two of my clan mates, uh, Dan and Amanda, they, were, they talked to me down. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You'll regret it. Like... They were there for me when I needed them. You know, I needed that emotional support, and they were there for me. Um, I, I'm really happy that they're, you know, I'm very grateful that they they, they talked me down. Um, and then there was another time that was very similar to that, where I was like, man, I really just want to, I I need it, I need it, I I'm I gotta buy these shards, man. And again, they were like, you know, I wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. You know, they talked me down. I, I almost relapsed again, and they were there for me. And ever since that second time where, like, you know, I, I almost slipped up, they were there for me both times. And ever since then, I've been good. I haven't I haven't been tempted like that since. So I'm, I'm very grateful for my friends my clan. Yeah. The clan boss... I'm really... The clan boss is the thing I'm both excited for and kind of dreading on this account like for, for me there's no motivation to go above nightmare because I don't need the shards I'm not really gonna need the books but on the other hand I want to do it for the content like if I can get a rares only account to ultra nightmare and put out a guide on how to do that for other people like that would be awesome but at the same time, it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> you know? Like, I don't need the resources for this account, but other people might. And actually, I do have a video. Well, I use Seeker and Fane, but I do have a video on my channel where I did a two-key Ultra Nightmare with two Seducers, a Temptress, two Seducer, Temptress, Seeker, and Fane. So, like, three rares and two epics and it was a two key team um so that was pretty cool but to do it with five rares i might be able to do a four key ultra nightmare team i don't know i've never tried it before and doing it on account on an account where i'm progressing slowly is going to be harder because i'm not going to have access to really good gear for a really long time so that's the other challenge. Like, I can go on my other account, you know, where I've got, you know, I could one key Ultra Nightmare, no big deal. You know, use that account to farm gear and then build a team full of rares, but like, that doesn't help someone who's progressing. Like, they're not going to see how I got that gear. Or if they do see how I got that gear, they'll be like, well, who cares? You, you've used a bunch of OP epics and legendaries to farm this gear. I don't have access to those champions. How am I supposed to get this gear to build that team? Even if you are using five rare champions, like, I can't build that team because I don't have that gear. You know what I mean? So if I could do it on this account, that would be dope. I'm, not only would I be happy, like proud of myself for being able to do it, but I'd be really glad that to know that I potentially help some people. So even if it's just like even if it's just like one person, it's like, man, thank you. You know, it'd be worth the effort. Okay, I don't think I can kill this guy before he takes a turn. So I'm tempted to attack her and focus her down and kill her before she gets her next turn. Um, There's only a 15% chance to freeze. 
So yeah, we didn't get the freeze anyway. Oh, it's this guy who has the ally attack. Aw, oh, dang it. Okay, well, crap. Yes, arena and great hall. Yes, never underestimate the value from farming your great hall. 100%. Which reminds me, I, I'm, it's probably about time for me to see if my uh, I have a free refresh. So thank you for... Okay, we're trying to sleep this guy. Aothar hits hard with his A2, bro. Let's see if I can freeze him. <sighs> oh, I can just kill him! I just kill him. He can't hit me if he's dead. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the heels out because we're about to start getting thumped. Uh, kill the armager, I guess. Or slow him down at least. Um, yeah, let's do that. One thing that's nice about War Priest heal, even though she heals for less than Arcanist in total, because 20% and then 10% to everyone else, compared to 15% twice, which is a total of 30% is War Priest's heals are instant, like burst heals for when someone's low and you don't, you, you know they're not going to get a chance to take a turn before the heal over time goes off. So that's really nice. Um, and just, that's really nice, I guess. Like, if, if she was, if, if there were more enemies alive, I'd be like, oh, she's going to die before she gets a turn. I can go, boop, and like, you know, stabilize her a little bit until she can go and get the heal over time. So it's kind of nice having both of those together. They've been a really nice duo. Do I farm for crit rate gloves? That's the question. Perception gear is good. I, I forgot about perception gear. Initially, I was thinking I was just kind of like put off faction wars. But getting... Getting perception gear makes me want to not put off faction wars. <laughs> faction wars is going to be such a pain in the ass on this account. What was that? Oh yeah. So tomorrow. Oh, not that one. Tomorrow, I get this pair of four star crit rate gloves. The question is, do I want to wait tomorrow to get a pair of four star crit rate gloves? Ooh. I don't know, man. Let me see. Hold on. If my... I don't think he'll be able to. But he is strong affinity to everyone on the final wave. If my shield guard can solo this level, I'll farm for gloves. If he can't, I won't. We'll move on. We'll do something else. If he was booked, he might be able to, because his AoE is on a two-turn cooldown. But right now, it's on a four-turn cooldown. Wait. Oh, no, no, okay. See, now he, oh, it's not quite a full heal. He doesn't have enough damage to full heal. Uh, I don't think he's going to do it, man. Aelthar hits really hard. Those ally attacks are, like, smoking him. And he's got increased attack. And the poisons. Yeah, no. Nah. If he was booked, it's maybe. Okay, we're, I'm not going to mess with it right now. Okay, so let's just um, let's move on. I'm not going to waste a bunch of time trying to get my guy to farm that solo yet. Yeah, man. Ugh. Perception. I'm glad you mentioned that, but at the same time, I'm like, ugh, why do you have to mention that? <laughs> I was going to be really happy not messing around with Faction Wars, because in my mind, I'm like, I'm just going to get, like, one and two star glyphs tops. Like, is it going to be worth my time to mess with Faction Wars? But then, ugh, the Forge materials for Perception gear definitely makes it worth it. Ugh. It's all your fault, Terry. <laughs> that's all right that's I totally forgot about that 
I would have remembered. I un I unlocked the forge at level thirty, and I'm currently level twenty eight. So I, I would have been reminded then, if not now. Gosh, yeah, that that is true. Perception is so good. Yeah, I probably should. I haven't been doing it at all. Ooh, ooh, four star. Please be something good. Attack percentage. I will actually keep this one. Hell to the yeah, brother. Aethel's already got one. But War Priest, I think her damage goes off attack. Yeah, just doing your main each day will give you a full three sets of perception. Ugh, yeah, I really need to do that, huh? I'm only on day two, so... I've only missed out a little bit. I should do that before I go to bed. I don't want to do it on a stream. Maybe I will. If I run out of energy and it's... I still got time, I'll, I'll mess with it, but I've been going for about four hours now. But now that my energy's, like, depleting, and I'm not leveling up constantly, and, um... I definitely wanted to stream today to show my progress. I, I wanted to beat a normal campaign, Morty Macabre, on stream, so I, I, I was... Looking forward to doing that. That was fun. And also, not only did I do it on stream, but I showed how I did the problem solving to achieve it. Like, I got stuck. I couldn't do it. I went back. I farmed food. I leveled up my shield guard. And then, you know. So, yeah. I'm glad that I, that I really wanted to do that. You get really lucky. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you get the... They give you, like, the starter materials, don't they? Yeah. Dude, if I get some six-star speed boots... Oh, speaking of speed boots... Cross your fingers, guys. This could be huge. Damn it. You didn't cross your fingers. It's all your fault. <laughs> Gosh. Can't rely on you guys for anything. All right, I'm going to manual this one. Just so we have our cooldowns up for the boss. Uh, put this guy to sleep. Or try to. These guys just do the poisons. And a lot of time they get resisted. That time they didn't. Man. They're dunking on Aethel, bro. I might have to... Rank her up soon, too. <sighs> Decrease speed on Aothar. No. Kill Aothar. No. Sleep Aothar. Kill it. Yeah, we got him. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I still can't believe you guys didn't cross your fingers. I'm really disappointed in you all. Now, the question is do I use the AoE here to try to get a little healing on Aethel? I think I save it for the next wave. No, I'll, I'll use it here because I get this to give, give me an extra turn. That'll help it come off cooldown. Yeah, that was good. I like that. Okay. Um, these guys are just going to do their little poison thingy, I think. Or maybe they already did. Let's try to put these guys to sleep. No. I think I can kill him. Yeah. And then I don't think I'll be able to... Well, maybe. Ooh, close, 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 close. Yikes. Okay, I'm going to attacking this one because it has more HP, which means I could heal more because I could do more damage to it. Oh boy, this is not a good. It's not good. Okay, we're gonna get a heal here. That's a. Oh, we got the increased defense because she was below fifty percent HP, so that actually worked out nicely. Why are they all attacking Aethel? What did she ever do to you? I'm not even gonna bother trying to kill him because they got the the continuous heals on him. Do that. Motion from the boat is making me sick. Yikes. Oof. Um, do I do increase attack? Hmm. 
it would be more obvious whether or not I should do it if all four members of my party were attack based. But because shield guards damage skills off defense, it makes it less obvious if it's better to do the buff or just attack. It's like she's missing her attack, but three other people get 25% more damage, you know, and herself gets 25% more damage on the next attack. It, it's kind of it's weird, but because he scales off defense only, you know, it, the math, it changes the math on whether it becomes worth it or not. If I can kill him... Uh, ah, shit. Pardon my French. Okay, maybe I try to kill the ads this next time. Or at the very least, when they don't have the heals on them, attack them, just try to put them to sleep. Or freeze them with... Oh, okay. Terry says, if you go to the options, you can turn off, uh, what's it called? Camera shake, and it'll turn the seasickness off. That's a nice tip. Thanks, buddy. Uh, okay, we're dead. She's not going to do this on her own. Okay. Let's try this again. This time... Oh, I forgot to turn the motion sickness off. <laughs> I guess we're just going to puke. That's fine. Puking every once in a while helps build character. I'm sure. Uh, go to sleep. I resisted. He would have gone to sleep, too. Don't kill Ethel. Okay. Uh, let's kill this lady next because she. I, I don't know what she does. I feel like. Part of me thinks she does the. Al okay, no, no, no. Oh, she does, she's the one who does the increased attack on everybody. That's what she does. Oh, oh, Ethel's gonna die. That was a big crit. Oh, okay. Zooming in and out when someone's about to, like, crit or whatever doesn't bother me that much. It's mostly just this constant motion of the boat. This motion of the ocean. It's getting me, man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this without Aethel. Let's start. I'm going to try, though, because I already spent the energy to get here. Okay, so I'm going to try to put... No. Okay. Um... I guess I could have tried to sleep one of these guys. I'll try to freeze one. Nice. Then decrease speed, hopefully. No, sleep this. I guess it doesn't matter which one I sleep. If I sleep at all. Freeze? No? Okay. Okay, their heals are gone. So I think I... Oh, nice. I think I have to focus him down before he gets heals again. Alright, cool, cool, cool. So now I really... The, the heals are about to go out on this next turn, I think. So, ah, she's dying. Um, oh, that sleep was... See, now this is such a shitty position to be in. Because I need to heal Arcanist or she dies. But if I don't kill this guy, then he's going to get healed by bad, bad L. But I think I can't lose my other healer. Oh, he didn't do the heals. Okay, we have time to kill him. Woo! Okay, there we go. I think we're good now. The A1 does more damage. I just need Arcanist to get back to her turn so she can heal. Maybe I need to book... 
one of my healers. Like, I, I know long term I'm going to be using Arcanist more, so I'm inclined to book her. But I don't know if War Priest gains bonus healing from books or not. If she does, she might be the better one to book. I'll have to look at it. But I think we got this. Definitely going to have to heal. Maybe on Arcanist next turn. Because her increased attack lasts for three turns. Where War Priest lasts for two turns. I think long term it's worth it to do the buff. Since hers lasts for three turns. Have to do that so she doesn't die. Does she? Okay, cool. That might be worth it. Getting the decreased speed on Battle was kind of pretty clutch there, too. Hopefully, he can reapply it so it doesn't fall off. Oh, he cleanses it. Okay, whatever. Well, he's his his max H. Like he's he, he keeps healing, but he's going down overall. Okay, we'll do the increased attack again since hers lasts for three turns. I I don't know if I want to book her though because. I'm not really going to use her after I beat Campaign that much, I don't think. The Arcanist does more healing, and her buffs last longer. But for situations like this, having the bonus healing from War Priest would be pretty sweet. Ah! Maybe I just say stuff it? And just go all in and quit trying to like heal and stuff. It's gonna be risky, but I don't think I can afford to skip doing damage. This is like the pivotal moment. Well, he's gonna heal, so I, I do the increase attack. And I think from here on out, I just ignore the healing. I need to kill him. He's he's not taking enough damage. Kind of nervous because if if Arcanist dies, then I lose that damage. Maybe I heal her here. Yeah, she would have died for sure. So nervous, dude. I don't want to have to stop and farm food for an hour just so I can beat Bad Alcazar. Dude, I'm so freaking close. Kill him. Yes! Sorry if that was loud. <laughs> I'm just gonna... It's three-star. I'll, I'll keep it for now. Man, that was way more complicated than it needed to be. Ooh, this is new. Lunar Festival. And this is... This is new, too. Didn't I just finish an artifact enhancement event? Is they doing another one already? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably... Dude, this is how I feel about Apothecary. If I pull him... Oops. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, do the thing. Motion Blur. No, that's not it. Depth of the Field? Ambient Occlusion? That's so stupid. At the field. Uh... Huh. Maybe it's down more. No. Oh! Disable camera shake in battles. Let's try that. I didn't scroll down far enough. What was I saying? Oh, this is how I feel about Apothecary. If I can pull Apothecary by day 18, I'll invest in him. If not, I'm going to hold out for Hikatoon. Because in my opinion, Hikatoon is better. 19% all battles speed aura is nuts. AoE turn meter reduction 
nuts. This is the exact same skill as Apothecary's, but she also brings the big version of decreased speed on her A1. For this challenge, Hikatune is better. Because if I pull Deacon, I can't use Deacon. The only way I would ever replace Hikatune is with, like, Lysandra or Virgum Car. Or not Virgum Car. What's the other one? The good one. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Nekmothar, sorry. Nekmothar, Lysandra, Lady Kimmy, like some of those high end speed champions, or like a Deacon Armstrong. That's the only way I'd ever replace Hikatoon. There's other healers in the game besides Apothecary. So if the only way I invest in Apothecary is if I pull him by like day 18. Like if this shard right here has Apothecary in it, then I'll, I'll, I'll build him. I won't wait to. But it, by then, like I'm just going to replace him. In, maybe not even then. I gotta have to pull him like sometime this week, cause uh, Hikatune is just a better speed champion. Now he's a better hybrid champion. He's a great healer and he's a good speed champion, but he's not the best speed champion. In terms of just raw turn meter advantage, Hikatune does so much more. I just why did I do that? I do that all the time. All right, um, back to campaign. Wait, I want to see how I'm doing here. I'm in third, which is fine, but how? by how much? Oh, by a lot. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm actually catching up on this. I, I wouldn't mind the gems, but I think the book might just be better, honestly. Oh, use a random claim boss. Yeah. But, I mean, if that's your justification, then, I mean, my whole account is rare. So like <laughs> yeah, I mean... The first time I ever invested in Hikatoon was my last free-to-play account. The, the account that I had Ninja, like, I told you that whole story. So, my last account was the first account I ever invested in Hikatoon. And she carried me so hard. Like, it, I can't even put a value on it. Like, my account progressed so fast after investing in Hikatoon. Like, I... I built her for my unkillable team with Demetha. It was Demetha, Seeker, Hikatoon, Marked, uh, and then a damage... Oh, Fane was my damage dealer. Uh, so Marked was to block the stun. I couldn't block both the stun and the affinity debuff, so I'd have to get two keys in on Ultra Nightmare before it switched affinities. That was always a pain in the butt. And then if Nightmare went Spirit, I was hosed. So it wasn't perfect, but most of the time I was fine. But so that's why I built Hikatoon, so I could build that clan boss team. And then I started putting her in my dungeon groups, and I was just like, she is so freaking good, dude. Like, it, I wish I would have, like, one of my biggest regrets is never investing in her sooner. Because she, I, I cannot sing her praises enough. She's one... She's been power creeped a little bit. Like, if you ask me if I would rather have Deacon Armstrong or Hikatoon, Deacon Armstrong, 100%. But if it wasn't for Deacon, I would say Hikatoon is probably like a top five epic. But Deacon kind of just makes it so like, it's it's Deacon Armstrong. Oh, we can uh, we can keep farming books for Shield Guard and War Maiden while we're here. Sorry for the tangent. I'm just really passionate about Hikatoon. She's such like. I don't know how often you guys will watch your runs when you're playing. Like, I feel like most people probably just set their phone down and then like go do something else. While while the, or if they play on the PC, they'll probably have it on their second monitor or minimized while the game is running. And I do that too. But if I'm at work and I'm playing raid, I'll watch my runs because if I fail, I want to see why. You know, if someone's doing more damage than someone else, I want to know that. So like. Like, all these little things. Like, I'm, I'm a freak. I like to watch it happen. I like to watch. I'm a freak. <laughs> Out of context, it doesn't quite sound so right. Anyway, I, I like to watch because I'm a freak. Moving on. When I put Hikatoon in my Fire Knight 20 team, and I could see her A3 push the enemy turn meters back, and then forward, like, 
they would get pushed back and then a turn meter or would happen so they advance again but seeing her like keeping the enemies from taking these turns like seeing their turn meter move slower after she puts the decreased speed on them like all these things like all these factors so i was like this this chick is crazy she is so good so i'm i'm super excited for hakatoon like i would have to pull apothecary like in the next three days for me to even think about building them. Because I know I'm just going to replace them with Hikatoon. And don't get me wrong, Hi uh, Apothecary is good. Like, he has a huge burst single target heal. And a lot of people go, oh, it's on a two turn cooldown. It's not. It looks like it's on a two turn cooldown. But because his speed boost is on a three turn cooldown, what happens is he uses his speed boost, and then he'll use his heal. And then he uses his A1. Then if his heal and his speed boost come off cooldown at the same time, which they will, because one's a two turn, one's a three turn, he prioritizes the A3 and uses his A3 to turn meter boost you. And then he will use his heal if he needs to. So because of the way the cooldowns work, it, it says it's a two turn cooldown, but it's effectively a three turn because of how he prioritizes his skills. It's it's not really a two-turn cooldown. So don't be fooled. Same thing with Lady Kimmy. Um, she has a four-turn cooldown turn meter boost and a three-turn cooldown AoE turn meter reduction. But she prioritizes the turn meter boost. So that's a four-turn cooldown. So you use the turn meter boost and you get your next turn. So now it's got three turns left on the cooldown. And then you have your AoE turn meter reduction. You use the AoE turn meter reduction and then you come back and then, you know, we got two turns left on each one. You, you, you know, then you A1, two turns left on each one. And you A1 again. Now they're both coming off cooldown at the same time. So even though the AoE turn meter reduction is off cooldown, so is the turn meter boost. And she prioritizes the turn meter boost. So if you have a Lady Kimmy, and you can fully book her turn meter boost without fully booking the turn meter reduction, do so because you'll save yourself a legendary book. Your instinct will be to fully book that A... I think it's her A3. Hold on, let me look. Because this is something... This is why I watch my runs. This is something I noticed. And I saved myself a legendary book when I was booking my Lady Kimmy. So I think it's this one, right? So this books to a four turn, and this books to a three turn. Okay, so I had it backwards. So they come... If, if she uses... The, yeah, so this is her turn meter boost. She uses this one first, and then the following turn, she'll do the turn meter reduction. And then these come off cooldown at the exact same time. So then she uses this one, and then the following turn... So even though this is technically a three-turn cooldown, unless you set it to prioritize this, which you shouldn't, you should set it to prioritize this anyway, they come off cooldown on the same turn, and then this one overrides the other one. So it says it's a three-turn, but it's effectively a four-turn because... Of the, it's the same kind of thing with Apothecary and his heal. It says it's a two turn, but it's effectively a three turn. So if you can get away with, if you're booking your Apothecary, which you, you know you should, he he he's got cooldowns. If you can get away with fully booking his turn meter boost without fully booking the cooldown of his heal, do so. You'll save yourself a book. And any champion you have like that, if they have multiple cooldowns that or multiple skills that are on different staggered cooldowns like that, just think about that and if make sure they're not coming off cooldown at the same time. Do I have any tips for farming silver? Um, the best place in the game for farming silver is Spider Twenty. Um, in terms of the amount of energy that it costs compared to the amount of silver you can gain if you sell the gear. That is the best place to farm silver. Even though you could farm higher levels of spider, it becomes less efficient because the amount of energy that you spend compared to the amount of silver that you earn is less. The so spider 20 is the best. If you can't farm spider 20, I'll show you where in a second when this battle, battle's over. It's uh, level stage 12, level three on brutal campaign is the next best place. Well, Fire Knight 20 is also a good place to farm silver, but it's slight... Okay, so it's like Spider 20, Fire Knight 20, if you're just selling all the gear that you earn. But if you're keeping gear, then all of a sudden it's not so good to farm silver there. But this level of campaign, Stage 3. The reason you farm Stage 3 
is because the shields sell for more silver than anything else. So, that's that. Right here. But you want to do it on brutal difficulty. But if you can farm Spider 20, that's the best place to do it. And just sell everything. You'll earn a ton of silver. Ugh. <sighs> It kind of feels bad to, like, be fighting through campaign and not farming food. I feel dirty. But I kind of just want to beat it. <clears throat> but I, like, if I can get to Brutal Campaign, I can farm food way more efficiently there than I could here on Hard. So that's... I'd really like to do that, if I can. So I kind of just want to push as far into hard as I can, hopefully beat it, fingers crossed, so I can start farming food on Brutal. But if I can't get to Brutal, then I'm going to have to suck it up and farm uh, on hard mode until I have enough food to rank some, probably, ugh. just knowing how long it took me to get the food to rank up Shield, shield guard. I'm gonna have to do that. Ow! I'm gonna have to do that four more times or five more times to make five five star chickens to rank him up to six star. Ugh. It's painful to think about. <clears throat> I should probably ascend him too. He's got. He's got a passive that cleanses a debuff off of him at, once you ascend him. So, like, if I am farming uh, 12 3, I don't know if there's a Lord Shazar on 12 3 Brutal or not, but if there is, and Shazar puts a bomb on Shield Guard, Shield Guard will cleanse that bomb off, which is kind of huge in terms of, like, can he survive it or not? Yeah, I think it's the five star shields. The five star green ones. If you get lucky, you can get, you know, you get 20k for the silver and then like 10,000 for the, you know, just completing it. Or maybe it's 8,000, I don't know. But yeah, you. Yeah. And because Brutal Campaign is the best place to farm food if you're leveling up food champions, not only are you earning the silver, but you're leveling up champions to, you know, progress your account. I'm the, on the boss already. Wow. Okay, so this is the boss that gave me a ton of trouble the first time on normal campaign. So hopefully... I don't get stuck here again. <clears throat> I just need a little bit more speed on my War Priest. She keeps going until not... She keeps not going until after the enemies go. Maybe I do need to go back and farm some speed boots. Go to sleep. Uh... I don't know, man. I initially I wanted to keep farming until I ran out of energy, which is actually going to be happening kind of soon. I'm starting to get tired. My voice is starting to hurt from talking for the last four and a half hours. <laughs> I'm out of practice. I, I took some time off and. Uh, yes, I will do this. There are no ads on the boss, if I recall correctly. Yeah, those guys hit hard on their A1. <laughs> Dang it. This might be Operation Shield Set time, if this boss gives me trouble, before I waste a ton of energy farming food.
All right. I think he has a damage reflect. Yeah, it's 93, 140. Like, my team is taking damage just for fighting him. The good thing is he's not single targeting Ethel. Ethel, however you say her name. Which, of affinity. So shield guard's tanking it up pretty nicely right now. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to kill him. Before he kills my shield guard. Yikes, I guess not. Um, this is a good example of when it'd be really nice to have Kale on your team. Because the poisons would just rot this guy away quick. Yeah. I really don't want to rank up any more champions to 50 without getting my campaign farmer to 60. So do I just farm food? Huh. Do I do I farm enough food to sixty shield guard at stage seven of or not stage seven? Stage three. Let's see. Let's let's see. Let's see. If I can't do it with solo, I might throw in. War Priest or Aethel. Alright. I don't think he's going to be able to do it, but we'll try. He couldn't do the lifesteal stage. I could try to book him so his AoE becomes a two turn cooldown. Another thing I could do is just wait till tomorrow when I get those crit rate gloves. <laughs> Yeah, that'll help too. There's a lot of things I could do. So he can't do it solo. What if I slap this beauty in here with him? Now we got Beauty and the Beast. Looking a lot better, that's for sure. Yeah, stage three of this area... The final wave contains two enemies. The, the, the Void Affinity, like, ogre-looking dudes. They hit really hard on their A1. And I'm likely to die if I farm stage 3. So even though it's worth more silver, uh, it's not worth more silver if you don't earn a piece of gear to sell at the end because you died. So I'd rather just farm... stage 2 where it's I feel safe it's like if I die then I don't get any of this silver right here hmm let me look at my gear and see if there's something I could do for shield guard to make him tankier cause if nope if I can get him to farm that solo that'd be huge These gloves are just ass. Like, I, I... He needs the lifesteal gear or he won't do it. I know that for sure. Those are kind of trash, too. They're not... Like, a double roll accuracy would make this nice, but... It's like... So, I need lifesteal gear. And defense percentage, speed, chest plate with speed substats and a decent shield with HP like this is this is these are probably my two best pieces of gear on the account <laughs> it feels like um, yeah I don't know man
Yeah, that's true. I could farm dragon. Yeah, maybe it's time to farm some dungeons. Yeah. Let's try that. Let's do that for a little bit. I've... I just don't like to farm dungeons until I've got my first six star usually, but maybe maybe it's time to break that habit. Who do I bring? Let's bring War Maiden just to give her some XP. Wait, what? She's gonna die instantly, but at least she'll get a few. She might get a level. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit. Well, make sure I kill this hoe right here. Okay. Wow, AoE freeze. Nutty. And then here. She does the block damage provoke thing, it's really annoying. Nice, okay. Yeah. Also, I don't have a poisoner yet. But I guess I can get toxic gear. I mean, you can do dragon without poisons, but it just makes it a lot easier because he takes a huge chunk of damage when he enters the inhale phase and before he exits, so you are getting you get to kind of double dip. Like right there, if he had poisons on him, he would have taken a big chunk. And then before he stuns me, he would have taken a big chunk too, and it might have knocked him out of the face before I took damage and got stunned. So, yeah, poisons are nice, but... Oh well, what can you do? That's what you get when you start with Aethel. <laughs> Alright, that wasn't so bad. Ooh, speed, crit rate, accuracy? Dude, even almost four star. This one, oh, 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 that's sexy. I already had like a decent toxic shield though. I wish that was like a weapon or a helm or something. Cause... All right, can I do a higher stage? Huh. Maybe? I won't be able to, I'm not gonna farm it because it's 3 to 5 and it costs more energy, but if I can clear to, like... I probably can't do 13. That's a long ways away. Uh, there's a break point here at 10, but that's force. Um, yeah, that was, that was a juicy piece of toxic gear. Yeah, this... The fact that this is where 3-star gear ends is awesome, but the fact that it's force affinity is a pain in the ass. Stage seven is a sweet spot. Yeah, I think you're right. Cause that's, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll just stay at seven. I, without a poisoner, I don't think I can go much higher. Like I wouldn't farm, I wouldn't farm eight, nine or 10 anyway, just because of the affinity of my champions. And I don't think I could hit 11. So there's really no point in pushing for now. I'm gonna stay on seven. Might as well put some gear on War Maiden. <laughs> Like, she just, just didn't... Ah, uh, but those... These guys are such a pain in the ass. Crimson Helm. Oh, uh, I really hope she dies. Because I don't want to deal with her putting that block damage up. Oh, she's not going to die. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Wow. This was a completely different run. I don't think I can farm this on auto. My healers, one of my healers are about to die. She had block, uh, block buffs on her when she went to heal, so she, I, she wouldn't have got healed from it anyway. She didn't take another turn, but that's still really annoying. The fact that I have to babysit it and click on the Crimson Helms to make sure they die I can't just like throw my hands up and auto farm. It's kind of annoying. Like spirit affinity, oh, such a pain in the butt. I 
think we still get this. No, 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 no. I'm starting to have uh, Aethel regrets. Maybe I should have just went with Kale. <laughs> I don't know. I think short term, Kale is definitely the way to go. But I was thinking, I was thinking like long term, man. Let's see if I can save my increase attack for the next wave to kill the. Yeah, this is really annoying. And once she's dead, I'll hit auto. I just, I hate that when like, she provokes and then puts block damage on herself. It's super annoying. Five star speed lifesteal boots from doing stage seven. Oh, look at you, Mr. Fancy Pants. Must be nice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Congrats, man. I'm happy for you. Even if it doesn't sound like it. That's awesome. Uh, I would love some of those bad boys. So on the account where I pulled Altan on day three and then Eva on day 14, on that account, I farmed... Brutal Campaign for Defense Percentage Chests, Speed Boots, Defense Percentage Gloves, and Lifesteal Shields from Campaign. Like, five star of all of those things. And then when I was done getting five sets of that, like, Speed Boots, Defense Chests, Defense Gloves, and Shields, five star shields, I went over to the Speed level of campaign and farmed five star weapons and five star helms and not only that but the speed i farmed five star speed boots until i got ones that when i leveled them up i rolled accuracy in the substats and they did the same thing for defense percentage chests I, I leveled them up until i got speed and accuracy in the substats but they were all gray so you didn't know if they were going to have speed or accuracy until you leveled them up so you know i'd go until i got a five star piece with the right main stats, and then I would level it up. So I'm going to keep that just because it has speed on it. So I would just do that for, for boots, gloves, and then chest to get accuracy and speed on the substats. And then I would, and then once, because since that was the hardest, that's where I started. And then I went to shields until I got five star shields that had speed and accuracy in the substats after you leveled them up. And then I did the same thing for weapons and helms. So doing that, I had full like campaign farmable grays, aside from one or two pieces that I purchased from the market. And with that, I was able to eventually two key nightmare with, with my team. So I thought that was pretty cool. But I had Altan, so that was you know gave me a pretty big advantage. Still two key nightmare with all campaign farmed grays. Not too shabby. Um, would I do that again? No, I would not do that again because it took me like three months to farm it like that. I, ha I had myself convinced that it would be easier than trying to farm that type of gear from Dragon. I don't know. It may or may not have been. I don't know. But by farming the level where you get chest pieces, you're getting only chest pieces that are exactly lifesteal gear. I don't know. Like, that was my logic. I don't know if it was correct or not. But, yeah, three months. It was a three-month-long grind, man. But it got me the two-key nightmare. So I was pretty proud of that. That's going to be sold. Yeah, see this... I am getting gear. But I'm not getting the lifesteal gear. This is why I kind of like just farming campaign for the... At least when you're early game. Eventually you get to a point where the campaign gear sucks and it's not worth it. But, uh, oh, now we want to take the arrow off her because she's got block damage. Oh, now it's off, so now we want to kill her. <laughs> Maybe I'd be fine to let it full auto. It, it, I want a couple rounds with it on full auto. I'd probably be okay. It just... 
It's just so annoying, man. Did 10 rounds and got two pieces of lifesteal. That's good. I, uh... Man. Oh, wait, you mean in total or two that were keepable? Yeah, you, you do get, like, a lot of shards, too. And then you get, like, the this ones that are two low stars to, like, you know... Like you're not going to use the three stars. At a certain point, you're not going to use the four stars. But if I were to log on to that account where I farmed up the that gray campaign lifesteal gear, I guarantee you I still have pieces that are level 16 and equipped champions that I used in game. Five star toxic weapon with speed in the sum stats. That's a keeper. And I just need two more good uh, toxic pieces. Oh, two total. Wow. That's not bad. Yeah, crit rate and speed. That's what you're looking for, man. Ugh. Uh, kill the bitch. Ah, oh, dang it. All right, get her, Aethel. Get her, get her, get her. Yeah, get her good. Mm, why did you not attack her? Now you Okay. You had one job, guys. One job. All right, well... Right, I'm, I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. I feel like I make things worse when I try to interfere with the AI. <clears throat> yeah, I could just wait till tomorrow before I farm a ton of campaign. Like, get those crit rate gloves, level them to 16, say heck it, goodbye silver, um, slap them on, and then maybe see if my shield guard can farm solo and if he can just farm spend the rest of my energy farming food until i have enough food to do i s i probably five star ethel before i six star shield guard i don't i don't know man Ooh, frost set is interesting huh I think for general purpose content, it's probably not that great. I've explained why in a, in a previous video, but of all the sets that can crowd control, I feel like Frost is the worst, especially the later you get in the game. It's the later you get into the game. Oh, oops. I guess we're going to find out if I can do this stage. Uh, the later you get into the game, the faster you become in comparison to the enemies. So ideally, you're taking like two turns for every one turn that they're taking. Well, when that becomes the case, you're not getting attacked so fr as often, comparatively, so Frost Set just becomes less good. So I think, you know, the Sleep Set or um, Stun Set are much better than Frost for that reason. But early game, when you don't have a ton of speed and you're just trying to get by and you're getting attacked all the time, Frost Set, frost set might not be that bad. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. Especially like early game Faction Wars where your champions like kind of suck and you're just cobbling some garbage together and hoping for the best. Like, I think I had a frost set on my Sandlash Survivor on my last account when I was like super early game. Just because I didn't have anything else to, you know, that's all, that's all I had. But it worked out well because they had attacker and then they'd get frozen. I was like, eh, cool. Uh, yeah. It was close enough that maybe if I manualed it, I could have pulled it off, but no. Oh, wait. I didn't put gear on her? Oh, nuts. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm getting tired. Um, I think I'm gonna end the stream. 
I might. Oh, I'm, I need to do my uh, my faction war stuff, but I could do that laying on the couch. Uh, thank you for reminding me about that, by the way, Terry. It's very kind of you. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm gonna lay down on the couch and watch TV until I pass out. So, and I think I'm gonna wait until tomorrow for these crit rate gloves before I farm any more campaign because that'll just speed it way up. That's true. Yeah, good rando pieces to fill in the blanks. So, I should probably collect this. Before I forget and the thing resets. And then I should probably collect this. But I'm going to save these ones. Hopefully... I don't think I'll, I mean, I'm not going to hit level 60 to cap out my energy at 120, but if I can get to, like, level, you know, whatever it is to get to 100 energy, that'd be cool. Oh, I'm second place in the tournament. That's cool, too. Barely. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how long it lasts. I'll be happy with either of these rewards, honestly. And I will wait to collect this until I have as much energy as possible. All right, well, it was a great stream. Lots of people came in and checked it out. Hope you enjoyed the series. I will do at least one of these a week. Um, just at the very least, if nothing else, to recap my progress that was made while I'm playing my phone at work. Unfortunately, I don't have time to stream every day, upload every day. I, I work long hours, and I have a very long commute, and it just restricts the amount of time that I have to do this kind of thing. So, If I decide to stream tomorrow, I'll see you then. If not, I'll see you next weekend. Take care, everybody. May the Schwartz be with you. Alright. I never know how to end a stream. I never. I always just sit here and ramble. On and on. I always feel awkward. Like, oh, I could have done better. I should probably say something else, because the way what I said was... Didn't, you know, I don't know. See, I'm doing it right now. Alright. I'm ending the stream now. Bye.